Welcome back to Rush of Madness, session 36 entitled The Beach Well. Last session, the group entered the town of Swordbreak proper. Well, they'd already been in it, but kind of like got more invested in it. Um, and over time, after exploring, um, learning things, fun things, new things, they learned that outside of the town, in the jungle, down the coast a bit, there is a secret casino that is run by um, the group of bandits uh, known as the Red Apples. They, um, through no real need of persuasion other than you have coin, um, were more than welcoming and gave the secret techniques on how to arrive here. Um, when you make it up to the boat, after following a path through the jungle, you see that there are two guards outside. Uh, one of them uh, seems to be holding a bag in one hand, um, and uh, what appears to be like a magnifying glass in the other. And the other guy um, appears to be um, kind of wearing a mask over his face, like a, almost like a metal mask over his face. Um, and uh, he seems to be holding two, uh, they almost look like little two horns. Um, and he's holding them like, you know, just hands tied on them guy with the bag and the magnifying glass says uh, alright one at a time one at a time who goes up first is this the same guy who was on the boat does they have the same voice different guy okay same <laughs> kick ass accent just want to make sure oh yeah we're just going to stick with it all the bandits all the no name bandits they sound like uh, cockney who's first I guess so Okay. No, 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 no. I'll go first. All right, don't so fight okay. over. I think I was the most excited. <laughs> so, um, magnifying glass, he kind of holds it up and kind of looks at you in your face with it to stand still, and then kind of moves it down, looking over your entire body as he does so, and then kind of scrolls back up, nods his head, um, and then uh, settles that magnifying glass in his belt strap, holds open the bag, and says, deposit any amount of cash you want, and the bag will refund you in an equal amount of chips. The currency of the boat. Uh, can we add more later? The bar can handle that, yeah, but you have uh, minimum buy-in. Alright. Uh, oh. Minimum buy-in is 100. Can do that. That's expensive. You drop in a hundred. Yep. And you are given a total of ten chips. It's an awful conversion rate. Yeah, so you would but know that the buy-in for um, most tables based on that will probably be one platinum. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. The same poor people, please. Okay. Same process goes over. And um, so long as nobody has any hidden items on their person, um, we don't have to discuss much with the magnifying glass. I think one person is... Oh, everybody's in the wrong squares. Did I think, my dagger count? Um, you uh, made a it's slide of hand... Tucked in, it's just tucked into No, it. no, no. If it's, if it's openly visible, it doesn't matter. Okay. I'm trying to remember who had an item that they... Failed Fox. on hiding, but Foxen was the only one who did well at hiding items. I don't have shit. The worst. I had yeah. eighteen. Yeah, so whatever you're hiding is on you. They didn't find it. Um, for Castia and for Astragoth, whatever you're hiding will be found out, and they'll ask you to deposit it in the bag. Oh, I thought I had... Okay. I thought I had a bonus enough. Because if I remember right, I said I was hiding the lockpicks so they looked like pins on my hat. Oh, but, yeah. No, I said there wasn't a roll needed and you already rolled it. Yeah, I remember now. You're right. So then just... Uh, just Tom. What, what my bag doing? of miscellaneous lucky charms that are the like trivial spell component stuff. Oh, um, if it's just sitting on your belt pouch, they're not going to... Yeah. They're okay. not going to care. Uh, when they scan it over, it's not. It doesn't seem to be an issue. Um, okay. 
How the fuck does Jonah keep getting in Zach's spot? Okay, there we go. It's meant to be. No. Love you. <laughs> Adorable. Oh, love you too. But god damn it. Um, okay, so if everybody does so, you buy in. Does anybody go over the minimum buy in, or is everyone just putting the 100 in? Uh, fuck it. I'll be special. I'll do 120. You get 12. Yeah. Yeah. That's special. That's special. Yeah. All right. Nobody else, but everybody buys in, correct? Okay, so deposit 100 gold off of your state sheet, and then in your inventory section, put 10 um, whale chips. chips. A whale chip? Whale, whale, whale. Chips is fine, but just again, maybe you end up at another casino and you have these chips. I don't want them to get confused. Oh no, I was going to do 12 chips for gambling. But... No, I understand. What I'm saying is is if you put 12 whale chips on there and you end up not, like, you know, cashing out for some reason. Yeah. And you end up at another casino, there will be no confusion as to the chips you have and the you. chips you acquire. I got you. Like, Gotcha. A normal casino. Right. It has a little label. Yep. Or an arcade with those little tokens. So you'll yeah. note that these chips are pretty simple. They appear to be made out of uh, bone of some sort. Um, they have um, kind of a yellow color to them for the tens. Uh, and in the center, there's a small little print that's been filled in with um, gold leaf that's in the shape of a whale. Hmm. It almost looks exactly like uh, a certain adorable whale we all love and enjoy. Uh, um, okay, so you make it on board um, without much issue. Uh, the first thing you'll notice, and it's kind of something that just stands out strangely, is that there are a bunch of suits of armor just standing around. There aren't people in them. They are just on stands, like small little plinths, suits of armor they're all identical greenish in color bright kind of orange red plume on the top of its head and they all appear to be wielding like kind of like in front of them sword down into the ground um long swords um but again unmoving just there <laughs> but strange and then the room is as it's shown um they're are people present? I'm not going to describe each table. I'm just going to go from left to right on my sequence here and determine what table you gravitate towards for whatever reason. So, Cassia, um, where does Cassia kind of lead off to to start? Um, uh, I'm going to assume roulette kind of game. The wheel okay. in the center. Yep. As you get closer to the wheel, you'll note that the mast, which you see from a distance, appears to be more transparent as you get closer to it, uh, allowing you to see through it to the other side of the roulette table. But looking up, you can see that there's still a mast present, but for whatever reason, there's some illusion or effect that allows you to see past it. At this table, uh, with you as you approach, is of course the, um, the dealer, or rather the spinner, um, a uh, tiefling um, woman with very pale skin and uh, her hair kind of done up um, quite a bit. She's wearing a slip dress and um, she just looks like she's just kind of leaning against the, um, again, looking at the motif. It's kind of like a big golden wheel for the roulette, like a ship wheel. Um, and she's kind of leaning against one of the nubs, uh, just kind of casually looking at the board and, uh, you know, flipping her chips on the table. There is a blue gentleman who kind of has a greenish colored, uh, hair and beard, um, or more just a mustache, really. Um, he's wearing kind of tacky, bright gold colors, um, but he looks, um, taller than most folks like he's a good eight foot um but he's kind of leaning down over it kind of watching the roulette as it's spinning um and last but certainly not least amongst their number 
um, is uh, what appears to be a bugbear, if I remember correctly from my notes. Yep. Yonk, yonk. Um, do you saddle up and try and enter sure. into the bedding? She'll try to watch once or twice since she has no idea how it actually works. Sure. So this table's pretty simple. It's going to be a 20 number slotting, and then there's going to be green and red as options. So you can bet on a specific number. Um, you can bet on a, just a color, um, and that's it. Those are the only two options. You can bet like on a very specific number, or you can bet on um, a specific color. Seems like the payouts are higher for the people, would be higher for the people who actually sure. of course. get their number pulled. I think she would put a chip on green and just one. Okay. Um, great. So roll a 20 sided dice. Great. Um, so um, green um, would be evens so that's an odd number that you've rolled um, and that means that uh, when the spin finalizes lands on like red 15 uh, or red one um, and uh, they take your money away they take your chip that you bet this game doesn't seem very fair and she'll wander off <laughs> <laughs> okay next up elizabeth <laughs> where does lose head to um, is there something, like, akin to, like, blackjack there? So, looking around at the tables, you can see that this table here, um, actually, no, that's not the right one. This table here looks like it's blackjack, um, but it does look like the table is full up. Um, All right. If you want to go and scan out the area and wait for a, a spot... That's fine. This table here is more of a Texas Hold'em style game. Mm, it's a game I've never played, so I don't know what that is. It also looks like there's only one other individual there who's waiting for more players, kind of looking at you, hopefully. Um, mm -hmm. He's a uh, lizard folk, um, kind of wearing just raggedy looking clothes. He kind of looks at you like, you can't tell if it's like, oh, come play this game with me, or oh, I want to eat you. Like, it's very much... Okay, no los dos. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> you know, it depends on how the game goes, I guess. Um, seeing that the other tables are pretty much full, she'll go there. Oh breathe, John. God. Breathe. How, how did Jonah end up in Fox's spot? Again. It's meant to be... Magic. Okay. I think everyone's in the right spot. So. <laughs> Joe, okay. Why do you keep doing this? The, uh, I don't know. The other I don't know. Goes, I'm sorry, guys. Oh, you oh. want to be yourself. Any, <laughs> any of your friends uh, want to play? Uh, I could see if they want to play with us. Dealer kind of like slaps open a new uh, deck of cards and starts kind of, you know, bridging and uh, ruffling mm. the cards. I see Braverick came over. She'll... Ooh. <laughs> I feel like I'm biased down in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Do you go over there and sit? Uh, uh, that's Okay, cool, cool, cool. So then we have you three. Um, then, uh, great. Um, he looks at you and will casually um, deal um, two cards to you. Oh shit. Cards I'm going to drag too off my ear. What the fuck is this? <laughs> so in the bottom uh, corner there, you should see yeah. that there now there's a, a little kind of pink square or rectangle above your mm. name and it should say the number two. If you hover over that and click it, it'll show you what cards you have. The rules for this oh. specific hold'em game are oh, Joker's Wild and um yeah, pretty traditional besides that. I have never played Texas Hold'em. It's so. poker, but you form your hand with the two cards you have there and the cards mm -hmm. that are going to be flipped by the 
dealer. Most of the place in the river. The river and the flop, yeah. Okay, so the first card he flips over is the Jack of Diamonds. Okay, so again, you're formulating your hand uh, with this, and based on the first three cards and the cards you have in your hand, you'll determine what you want to bet. Then the last two cards that are flipped for the um, this side, you have to ante, 10, sorry. So you got one chip in already. My brain's working here. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since I've remembered the breath. I've been doing a lot this week. Um, anyway, you formulate your hand with poker hand. You're looking for a poker hand with the cards you have in your um, your hand plus the cards that are on the table. And so the current cards on the table, again, are Jack... And three of diamonds and the ace of spades. So you can now bet more than you already had. Staying. Staying, okay. And you would be the first person to the left of the dealer, so that would be your prerogative. Lose? Uh. I only know how to play blackjack. Stay, which keeps your original bet. Just, just, just stay. Yeah, though. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll hold it. <laughs> the lizard folk will, uh, I race, <laughs> and he throws uh, uh, another coin in, so he's got twenty in. Call. You said call. Call. Okay. <laughs> cool, cool, and let's say you're calling as well. Which means you're not bet if you if you can meet his that's fine or you call and you just say that's it that's all I'm willing to bet. Yeah, I guess I'll call. For this okay, cool, cool, cool. So then the last of the five cards is flipped, and then he reveals his hand, um, and he is going to form um, <laughs> two aces. So his hand is two aces. And so you'll do likewise uh, to see who gets the strongest poker hand. And so you'll just flip the next your, your two cards and try and form your best poker hand with what's on the table. Go ahead, uh, Rabbit. You got nothing. Got nothing. <laughs> okay, so good old-fashioned just poop stick. Okay, and then do you have any, um, do you have any aces in there, Elizabeth? Uh, I have a joker and an eight. Good. Oh, no, so yeah, you can have three of a player. kind. Two yeah, you can have three of a kind, three eights. Oh, yeah. Oh, so like that. Oh, that's not a joker, that's a jack. Oh, oh it's a jack, I'm done. But that's, that's just as good, because it's two pair. I can't read. It's two yeah. pair. So what that means is, is you win the pot, which means you now have four of those tokens. Hey. And I'm going I may to be dumb, but I won. <laughs> recall all. And that that's that. I'm going to move to the next person. So, uh, Jonah, where is Orlandis going? Um, he's going to check up, up above, over here. Okay, so you'll see that there are some people kind of situated at this table here. Um, it's kind of overlooking the kind of a common floor. They have big golden mugs. Um, and, um, it looks like the, uh, folks that are kind of present here, uh, one looks like he might be some form of undead, kind of very creepy looking individual, um, and dressed the part. Um, then there's a woman in black armor with an equally kind of creepy kind of cloak. They look like they might be a pair. There's a bandit lord, like a highwayman kind of like bandit man in splint mail and like a horned helmet. Um, he looks like he has a large big like slab of mutton and bread kind of just you know sopping the uh juices of the dregs of the food that he's eating and there's a woman who's just kind of watching everything with like a creepy looking smile on her face and she's wearing very kind of plain looking garb but it looks like it's meant to be in a nice place it just doesn't look as nice as everyone else's clothing okay and then I'll go up here and see what kind of games is going on. Sure. So it looks like there's a group of goblins um, along with a drow and um, a species you're not familiar with. Um, kind of a yellow 
almost toad skin, toad like skin kind of person uh, seated at a table around the mast. Uh, there is a half orc dealer who has nobody at his table, um, just kind of situated there. And then there is a bar um, with a woman behind it serving drinks. Uh, you see what looks like a um, uh, triton, or, or rather, sea elf, rather, um, and another lizard folk uh, at the bar drinking, occasionally looking over at each other and like shooting each other a remark, but they're not like together. They're just kind of like small They're talking. just flirting. Small talking, yeah. Then the only game that looks like it's uh, getting is some action is another half-orc uh, dealer on the other side. Looks like there's space for one more person, uh, but it looks like they are also playing Texas Hold'em. Hmm. Okay. 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 If you walk over um, to it, you'll, you will see that there is a sign behind the dealer that says 50 minimum buy-in. Fuck yeah. Okay. Or sorry, five, cool. 5 minimum buy-in. Five Let's minutes. do it. Let's do the this one. This Texas hold them. Do you know how to play poker? Nope. Oh my but god. But I, I I paid attention to the great to the explanation. <laughs> You're good. So I'm dealing you cards. Um, first, I need to deal myself cards. Um, okay. And then I need to. Uh, right. Let me take away the five chips. Ignore that card for now. To Jonah Deal. You have two cards as well. Okay, and so here comes the flop. You bought you bought in for five. And then we've got Me. our cards. Where are my cards? Uh, bottom at your name. You should see a two in like a pink square. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do I draw them? Uh, you can click them and see them, so you can view your hand. Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Wrong one. What? Your name. Your name. My your, name. Your character in the lower left. Oh! Okay. Cheater. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm clicking it. You are thrown out of the casino. You have you just... to double click the little two card with the two. I am. It's not doing nothing. You just clicked the number two. It didn't do anything. Mm -mm. All right. Let me switch it up. Hold on. Trying to just do a simple gambling. Okay. 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 I got it. I got it. You can I see your it. cards. I okay. can see. Yes. So based on the the river, or the flop rather. Um, what is your bet? Um, you're not first, though. Actually, you are first. You're left of the dealer, so. Okay. What were the options again? So you can raise, which means you just double your amount, or you can bet any amount in that raise that you want. You can basically raise with all your money, which is called going all in. Um, mm -hmm. basically the only way you can when someone raises without calling meaning kind of removing yourself oh calling means you remove yourself from the game I am dumb Elizabeth shouldn't oh. have won that but you you, you know what you, you wouldn't have I... called your character wouldn't have called uh, no, folding is leaving the game John call yeah, is, that's right. is sorry my brain's just dumb. matching the bet matching the bet which means you oh. had to have paid more so Vravik should be up oh. two or one more coin and uh Elizabeth should be richer one more. I'll bet. You're right. Hell yeah. Sorry, my brain's I'll dumb. So, I'll yeah. bet. He wants... Bet. Yeah, four more, so she should have 14. Yeah, because the lizard would have had... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll bet eight. one. Okay, so you're putting one down. Okay. Yeah. So the uh, woman next to you, uh, who appears to be like a water person, um, possibly a sea elf, um, she matches... Uh, your bet, so she calls your bet, and then the orc uh, present there um, puts five coins down, so he matches and raises by four. Okay. The dragonborn at the far end of the table folds. So that comes back around to you. I believe you have to meet the raise, so you'll have to pay four more coins. To stay four in. more, okay. Yeah, to call his bet. 
and then you can okay. raise it. Okay. The um, merfolk will drop out. She's going to fold as well. Okay. Okay. So then with the next card, he kind of grins uh, the, the orc with like a toothy grin. Mm-hmm. And um, that gives the last opportunity here for the betting. Uh, he is going to uh, go all in, uh, which for him means he's putting five more in. Okay. So my only options are to fold or go all in. Hold? Fold or go all in. You have to put a bet in if you want to stay in. You have to meet his bet. I can't. I only if got you, two left. Then you can go all in, which just means you're like putting everything you have in just like he did. Mm -hmm. Betting it mm -hmm. all, writing it all on it. Which means you're mm -hmm. going to win big or you're going to lose it all. Mm. I mean, if you have an ace, you got two. A two big ace spender. I'll fold. You're folding? You already got eight coins and you might as well go. Dude. Can I just do it? Alright, I'll do it. I'll go all in. Fuck it. Alright. So the last Fuck. card the last card for the uh the you raise twice, you lose it. Is there. And then when um it comes to showing, you're first. So go ahead and throw your cards down. You can just grab them in your small little spot and move them onto the board. It did not do good. It did not do good at all. Okay. Another pair. Three pair. Yeah, so he Has a full house. So Damn. that means he wins it all. Um, Damn. And you are out. Oh, this is unlucky. Yep. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Last but not <laughs> least, um, Astrogoth, you uh, see um, Orlando's kind of move towards the higher uh, section up near the bar. You would, you know, you'd be able to read the room a bit better than everyone else. It looks like the very high dollar, like, table tables are up on the top uh, right. Right. And um, it definitely looks like the common floor is filled with a, a variety of different games. My first thought upon seeing this board, this map and everything, was why is Lizelle playing shoots and, uh, shoots and ladders mm. at this table right in front of me? <laughs> um, that is snakes and ladders? Um, <laughs> you can clearly oh, my tell man. it's a snake. Uh, but uh, interestingly enough, that... Uh, specific art predates Lazel. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's from um, fourth edition. Oh, okay. It's just the the way that the picture looked like. I, I almost thought like you just like screen capped a picture of Lazel and put it on there, but it that would be look yeah. like her. She she is very stereotypical Githyanki warrior. Where's the bar? Top left. It's all the way. She uh, sees you approach. Um, you kind of move in next to the lizard folk, um, who uh, looks like he is kind of nursing a large golden tankard of some sort of beverage. She, the elf at the table or at the bar, seems to have just like a nice kind of crystal flute of uh, some white wine um, and the barkeep will say to you <laughs> fancy fa fancy digs uh, anything in particular you want gestures towards the ornate bottles of um, liquor behind her and the casks of uh, ale and booze around her what do you have here that's unique that you can recommend well uh, the most unique drink I think that we have on offer, she kind of um, flutters around. It's going to be a bit pricey. She leans over her shoulder. Hope you didn't spend all your money on your 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 fit. No, I was just born looking this good. <laughs> she uh, reaches up, grabs uh, what appears to be kind of like a crystal decanter. Um, its uh, coloration is just kind of like a bland, transparent. Um, she sets that onto the table and um, slowly starts to unscrew the glass topper. Um, make a history check. Okay. Uh, 
you're not familiar with the bottling process um, or the beverage you're about to be served. It's something that is absolutely unique to you. Uh, she finishes the unscrewing portion, uh, sets out um, a half glass, reaches underneath, uh, you hear some fidgeting, and then she kind of pulls out, um, a, she has a set of tongs, and in those tongs is a perfectly round sphere of ice, which she sets in the glass, and then she pours this clear beverage so that it is kind of like a perfect two fingers of the beverage um, in the bottom, and um, she reseals the uh, decanter and she says that's gonna put you back um, one ship and it's not a lot of alcohol that she just gave you so obviously not a lot of um, the exchange rate is horrible again but... or or 10 gold or one platinum you can pay with real coin here and also if you need more chips I can sell them to you well I'll, I'll give you uh, I'll give you 10 gold she smiles and puts that in, um, uh, but not terribly happy because no tip. <laughs> I have to try the drink first. If it's really good, it'll be a bigger tip. Uh, do you ask what it's called before you sip it? Yeah, I was gonna. That was gonna be my next question. She says, "Tears of Ramanon." And what makes this a unique drink? Well, um, it is. Um, specifically uh, cultured uh, from the sweat and also the tears of a silver dragon. Uh, it's very rare outside of Ikashad, and um, we managed to have, she gestures back to the decanter, a bit of it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's apparently the smoothest, uh, yet most flavorful and potent alcohol on this side of uh, the Dragon Isle. All right. I will take a small sip because I do not want to drink something I've never had before and immediately be plastered. Sure. You take the tiny little uh, sip, and the best way to describe it, um, to kind of give you an idea of like what it tastes like in real life, um, have you ever had a... Um, oh, God, what were, those, what were those beers called? Not beers, but... Um, are you thinking of Zima for some reason? Zima, yeah. So think of a Zima, right, with a bit more of like a whiskey profile, but that same kind of like malty taste. Uh, but then imagine it with a burn. Okay. But it's definitely very good. I will give her four gold coins, and I will say, you're right, this is good, thank you. She nods her head, uh, sweeps the coins off the uh, uh, table, kind of looks over to the elf who's kind of like gesturing with her empty glass, uh, immediately kind of pulls a wine bottle out and gets back to service. Uh, the lizard folks kind of looking at you. Obviously you're serving as a block to the apparent conversation that you saw kind of going on before you sat down. As in, I interrupted the conversation. Well, yeah, it, it definitely looks like the lizard folk cares more than the elf does. I'll look over to him and... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, did oh? you... Oh, no, 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 no big deal. Uh, uh, it's a really fancy outfit you got going on there. Uh... How, was, how was that? Pretty good. You, I it was really good. I reckon I recommend it. Kind of gestures for the barkeep who finishes, you know, serving the wine. Uh, give me one of those for me and my friend here, and then sets out three um, chips down on the table from what appears to be like a small little like leather bag that he has filled with about twenty of them. Uh, after dropping down the three, um, she uh, nods her head, goes back up to the bottle carefully and diligently giving you time to talk to the uh, lizard folk but he's kind of looking at the bottle in like you know preparation the anticipation yeah anticipation is what I wanted do you want to talk at him before the uh, beverage is served or sure um I'm trying to think what I would want to say um so what brings you here? Company, games, or drinks? Uh, well, uh, 
little bit of everything, actually. Um, me and my uh, folks, a uh, group of black scale lizard folk who uh, live on down the way, not too far from here, we've made a pretty strong trade alliance with the Red Apples, and um, we uh, do a bit of a protection racket for them, and uh, they give us the amenities of the Sword Break um, town and the uh, Lavidian coast. Just a fair deal, fair trades. We've got a lot of folks we've um, been kind of moving into uh, culture and society, trying to gain a bit more of a, a refined palate, so to speak. Oh, yeah. well, this drink will clearly be a stepping stone on your way there, my friend. Yeah, I was kind of scared of it at first. Uh, I don't know, uh, dragons, ooh, our people have a pretty strong reverence for them. Um, they're potent, magical creatures, but uh, she finishes pouring the uh, two glasses, uh, refilling yours, and um, the two of you kind of salute, um, and uh, he sips his, kind of, ah, ah, oh, oh. <laughs> kind of trying to, like, at first looking disgusted, but then trying to kind of, like, nod and be accepting of it. But yeah, the second one for you goes down quite a bit smoother. There's something about repeat, um, repeating the uh, process with the uh, aftertaste already present that seems to be significantly better than the first. Um... And what are you? What what brings you here? Me and my crew are just sailing through, and we figured that if we wanted to get a real taste of what this area had to offer, we might as well check this place out. Crew, you say? A lot of ship captains around tonight. Interesting. It's probably because the captain's here. And we're probably just attracted to the fact that the casino itself is a boat. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Didn't even think of that. <laughs> Uh, folks, folks do like boats. Uh, but I think, you know, if you've been on a boat as long as some folks have, you probably wouldn't want to... Uh, anyway, um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, had a, I had an obvious lead in, but it didn't, I didn't catch. <laughs> what, with uh, his, uh, the black scales and... No, the... no, no, he mentioned, what with the captain being here. I, I, no, I picked up what you were putting down. I'm trying to get more information before I go diving into something. Fair, fair, fair. Okay. <laughs> He's kind of, uh, ha <laughs> um, yeah, um, really interesting that the captain and Hadrian are all here. I mean, two of the seven masters of the sea? It's crazy. I take it that doesn't happen very often. No, oh, no, no, certainly not. Um, I'm just hoping nothing crazy goes down. Probably not too friendly towards one another. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Pretty sure um, Apple Eater will deal with them if they uh, get too out of hand. That is what they're here for. And if they have you guys working with them, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. And I'll wink at them. Yeah. And he had he had said a specific name there, um, just like Adrian. Well, that, but also Apple Eater, not the Red Apple. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's okay. Um, yeah, it seems like one specific individual amongst them um, has a moniker. Um, he seems to be kind of, you know, moving back towards his poison of choice, which uh, seemed to have been just like fire water uh, he was ordering. Um, well, thanks for the company. Uh, do, do you want me to buy you another drink before I head out? Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Thank you for uh, giving me the gumption to go for it. And thank you for civilized conversation. Of course. Uh, uh okay. Um, if you want to pick a I'll second, yeah. If you want to pick a second, we'll go ahead and backtrack, go the other direction. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll probably at that point just like kind of wander around, do the whole thing where like, not necessarily be a wallflower i don't want to stick out but kind of blend in and just uh gather the um what, what is that the the human terrain if you will sure um so you'll note that it 
does seem like as you're kind of maneuvering around, again, remembering this is a mast, the uh, strange fellow uh, whose species you would actually recognize as Githzerai, a very rare occurrence to see a Githzerai um, on Urz, um, seems to be kind of looking at you a lot throughout the entire process tonight so far. Okay, duly noted. All right. So wallflowering and being slightly um, enamored or the focus of attention at Feast of a one. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Fox and you would have moved to the uh, table to play um, since you would technically have been first in the recycle. I'll just go ahead and ask you, do you wish to continue playing at the table? Um, and this t question would obviously be fielded to Lose as well. It does look like as more people are taking up to this table, the blackjack table kind of breaks, and this strange-looking fellow kind of moves over to your table and stands near it, watching, but, like, not actually sitting yet. Mm. Opening up a space at the blackjack table. Mm. <laughs> I'll keep playing. I'll stay here, though. Okay. Um, so you wish to go again. Okay, so just presumption, yeah. presumptively, it's not a one-for-one -one basis. The presumption is, is that kind of you're playing over time. So mm -hmm. just imagine you played like a dozen or, you know, a handful of hands, and mm -hmm. you've managed to kind of maintain your level. So here we go again, um, dealing uh, myself. Um he does move to sit um, as the hand is being deal dealt out, uh, since you mm -hmm. folks are staying, and then... She'll nod to him and, like, just recognizing that he's there. You'd also recognize his species as well. Um, he does look like he has mm -hmm. kind of a number of feral-looking traits, but this is not a person that is um, of a species that you aren't familiar with. He's a shifter, uh, which means that somewhere in his lineage he had a lichen throat. Hmm. Or his kind of culture did. Um, so Elizabeth and Fox and Deal. You should have your hands. Yep. And you put in your one chip. One chip to start. And flippy flip flips. And then the uh, play goes to Fox and raise one. Alright. So the uh, shifter will kind of throw in. Uh, I'll throw another in. Okay, call, call. Mm -hmm. And the lizard folk will um, see and raise one. So we're at three now? Well, so the way it, it, the way it went is we've all met Foxen's call for a raise. And now the lizard folk is set another uh, chip down for a new raise, which means that mm -hmm. if uh, Vradic wishes to continue, Vradic will have to at least put one more coin in. The same is true of the shifter and of uh, Lose. But you can also call or see and then raise. Mm -hmm. The uh, check. in. Okay, okay. Uh, the shifter will kind of look down at the uh, table. Folds. Looking at the lizard folk and looking at uh, <laughs> Rabbit, kind of like... <laughs> and then Lose? Um, all... Uh... What's our bet at now? Sorry, so, is it three? Yeah, it'll be a total of three in. Okay. Um, I'll uh, stay in. Yeah, and the pool... Okay, so you're, you're all three in, and the shifter went out at two. So currently there are a total of 11 uh, chips in the stack. So... Flip... And then one more go around of it. Fold. You said fold? Fold. <laughs> Lizard folks' face, just like bright as can be. Happy, happy, happy. All right. Close, eh? Uh. You get first opportunity to, you know, 
you can just check, which means you'll just kind of wait for the lizard folk to decide what to do. Yeah, um, I'll check. Okay, he's going to uh, raise two. So to stay in, you have to put two more uh, chips in. I fold. <laughs> All right. So he doesn't have to reveal what he has, but uh, Bravik, you're pretty quick on the eye and the upkeep. You would note that when he flips the cards down and kind of reveals what he had, um, he he was basically flying by the seat of his pants. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I, was I was just like, you know what, I'm, I'm going for a straight, but I ain't getting nothing. <laughs> uh, I could have... Yeah, you could have taken the pot there. at least one. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and so what you're noticing, Bravik, um, you can make an insight check too, if you'd like. Might get a bit more information than I was just about to give you. Yeah, you will. Um, so it definitely looks like the lizard folk is just happy to be playing. You would also notice that he's pulling from a pretty large amount of coin that he has. And he has bluffed every single time. <laughs> He has never had a good hand. So keep that in mind during your next rotation. Until you try to raise on him. He'll then have pocket aces. It'll be the worst day of your life. Orlando, right. you cannot stay at the table. You have no chips. So if you wish to continue gambling, you will need to go to the bar. Yeah, I, I go buy some more chips. How many? Five. Okay. He's going to convert our entire boat treasury oh, into yeah. shit. I'm going <laughs> to... No, but see, if, <laughs> if, if he wins, we have so much more. Let me see how much we got <laughs> in the treasury. <laughs> I'll bet the boat. One second. I'm One pretty second. sure One second. that both Lose and Hanild will can, skin him Can alive. I put a boat inside of the bag? And if I do, how many chips will I receive for said boat? All right, I'm gonna bet everything. No, I'm just kidding. Oh my God. Um, Thirty thousand gold. All I'm buying. Dude. I'm buying four, four chipper rubies. Four. Four. Okay, so that means you can't get back onto the high uh, people. Yeah, table. I'm gonna see if I can get some more chippies uh, from the lower tables. Okay. So, yeah. is there any table at the bottom that you're interested in trying? Uh, I want to try this one over here. Okay, as you walk over to the weird beholder-looking table, you would notice that the table next to it has a lot of seating, but there is this strange, like, kind of squat-looking clown-like person dancing on the table to the music, which appears to be ghostly emanating from either it or the table or somewhere around it and the table. That would be this... No thing here. It looks like it's about the height of a gnome or a halfling. Uh, in the face, it's hard to tell due to makeup and the gesture cap. It's very confusing looking as it's just doing its thing. <laughs> so there's no like dealers or anything, or is that the dealer? Is that a table to play at or just sit at? You can find out and live your life, but it sounded like you are going for the beholder table, right? Yeah, I'm going for the beholder table. Okay, great. So you see that there's a cup and dice on the table. There is already, you know, a number of people present at the table, and uh, the dealer um, person, the, the the employee, says, "New shooter," and uh, you see everybody kind of nod their head. Um, the uh, lady next to you kind of moves her hand very deftly, and you watch as a magical spectral hand appears on the table, grabbing the cup and kind of sliding ten dice into it putting it in front of you. Okay, I'll take it. Um, the dealer kind of looks at you, waiting, expectantly. Oh, uh, <laughs> dude, shit. The minimum <laughs> buy-in was one for these tables, right? Um, yeah, this table is one, right? And, uh, um, sure, do you have um, uh, bone dice as a proficiency? I do not. Okay, cool. So you have no idea what this game is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you've got a, a cup full of dice, ten dice. What do you do with them? Um, just gonna shake them. Okay, you're shaking them. 
Looks like the, the two ladies and the uh, older gentleman are kind of watching you expectantly. The woman next to you is wearing very ornate and very foreign attire. She just definitely doesn't look like she's from Jernaris. She looks like she might be from somewhere far to the north. Uh, possibly further north than Ikashad, maybe Cardis, you're not sure. Uh, the woman across from you looks like a very stereotypical Jannara noble. Her hair's done up very high. She's wearing like a high collar and like shoulder pads. And her dress is kind of like this lush, like mauve and purple color. And the old gentleman <laughs> is wearing what appear to be wizard robes, but like the most gaudy and like overly kind of like pomp, just wizard robes there's sequins on there um and he's just kind of like leaning on the table just watching you expectantly he's gonna lean over to the lady next to me he's just gonna whisper my lady how do we play this game she goes <laughs> you do not know that's funny okay well just roll the dice love see what happens eh? <laughs> Okay. She, the dealer kind of looks over confused and he, she leans over to him. He does not know how to play. <laughs> Ch <laughs> child walks over and gives away 10 gold. Could feed the family roll. for a month. <laughs> <laughs> okay, roll 10d6. 10d6. Right. Got it, got it, got it, got it. 10d6. Oh, shit. Okay. Four. Forty-two. Okay, so from that set of dice, what you're going to want to do, and she's going to tell you how to do it, you're going to formulate as many pairings that form the number ten as you can. Okay. How many you got? Give me a second, I'm slow. One, two... The answer is three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're really close to four, but it's three. Okay. Yeah, I know. So, okay, okay. now, everybody at the table, including you, has the opportunity to bet whether it's going to be on your second roll a higher number of tens or a lower number of tens. And expect okay. it on who bids what or the same number of tens. So if you bid on same number of tens, it's called you. Well, you're you're sorry. Your bet is forced. It's same number of tens. Everyone okay. else is going to basically be betting against you, uh, one way or the okay. other. Okay. So you can roll your dice again, okay. and you want to get exactly three more sets of ten out of ten dice. No more, no less. Okay. All right. So we got ten. We've got Great. ten. We've got 10, and we've got another 9. So you would nail exactly on, which means Woo. that the bets that were just thrown out by them, which would have been one apiece, um, and it actually would have been uh, to bid higher, um, the total of five coins are basically coming into you right now. So if you walk away from the table, mm -hmm. you're five up. Okay. So I've got nine now. But if you'd like to okay. ride again, you can roll the dice. And if you get um, exactly three sets of ten, no more, no less, you once again get their bets. I'll try it again. I'll do three. Three chips. Okay. Three chips. Three yeah, chips. at any and time, then... and you, you can definitely continue to like put more down at any point. So the first roll, that determines what I'm betting for. Correct. Like whether, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, and you have to continue to shoot for that. So, um, that's going to be less, I think. Yeah. I got one so far. Yeah, it's going to be two. So, two. that means the three you put down, okay, because you bet on every single shot, it's not a continually yeah. writing situation, uh, you're out the three. Okay. And the old man, who seems to have continually been betting lower... Um, through those sets, wins out, and okay. that's and yeah, that's um, that's a uh, beholder dice. <laughs> that's fun. I like it. Then it would go to Lose. We already covered because she's with uh, Bravik. So uh, Cassia, you said this game is boring and are walking away. You'd see a Lauren Orlandis <laughs> coming down, 
at about the same time, you would see that uh, Lose and Vravik have maintained their position, and you know Orlandis is up at the top. What would you like to move? Um, assuming she saw the seat open up at the blackjack table, yeah. she would wander over there. Okay. Shuffle. Deal. Two. Uh, one, two. And deal two. Cool. Okay. So uh, you move to the blackjack table and you sit. And uh, the two people next to you, uh, one is a. Well, they're both human. So they look like they're together, uh, but it definitely looks like they're kind of rivals, like just in the conversation. The, the banter back and forth is very body and very kind of like your mother um, esque. Mm -hmm. um, the. Uh, Bids are thrown out, or rather the um, the cards are dealt out, and you put your one coin in. And I forgot to deal the dealer. This is actually a game where the dealer gets cards. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, person to his left would go first. Um, and at any point that you are making either um, a stay or um, hit, uh, you can increase your bid. Increasing your bid does nothing other than to kind of um, force the others into doing likewise, if they wish to remain. Okay, so the first guy will take one card, um, and uh, he's going to put another coin in to stay, or to keep it interesting. Okay. And then the next guy will... He's going to stay uh, where he's at. And um, he'll put the coin in to maintain the bet, though. So, Cassia, you're up. you got to put one more in, and um, you can either stay or hit. Um, she'll put another in and hit. Cards are not to you. Higher is better, right? Yes. <laughs> the uh, guy next to you. Yes, it's the best. You should all as as high as you can go. The dealer says, "No." Twenty-one, milady. You're trying to get the number twenty-one. Uh, face cards are count as ten, and the ace counts as either an eleven or a one. Your choice. So 23 is bad. 23 would be bad, yes. But um, if that's what you've got, that's what you've got. Um, stay, stay, and for you, milady? Uh, 23 is bad, so I think I lose. All right. If you lay down your cards. Um, the uh, first guy will put down his cards, um, having a um, 13, because he didn't want to go again. And the uh, next guy, um, who did not hit, has a 16. The dealer also has a 16. And you have 23, you said? Yeah. You know how to pull your cards and drop them down? Perfection. That's too many cards. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so, Tom, um, this game seems unfair. <laughs> <laughs> Cassia feels like she understands now, though. She kept going for higher numbers, but now that she knows there is a target, okay. she will keep going. So my plan is to, of course, go around the rotation a couple of, quite a few times. So I just want to make sure, like, these two guys are kind of, you know, happy with what they got. The dealer did win, because dealer wins ties, but they're happy with where they're at, and they kind of, like, look over at you, and they say, uh, do you uh, need anything to drink, milady? The other guy says, are you even old enough to drink? <laughs> I don't know. But I had this... And she'll describe the um, really fancy, expensive stuff that she had at the... Um, it, when we were in um, Eincrad. 
The, they, they all, like, even the dealer just seems to be confused as you're describing it since you don't know the name of it. And they're kind of like, okay, okay. The dealer says, all I have a table for you on offer, though, is wine. And he pulls out a bottle of wine, sets it on the table in front of you. Um, and then kind of, like, a glass as well, if you'd like. I, I mean, sure. Wine's expected and free for you two gentlemen as well. Oh, of course, of course. She's drinking. We're drinking. And so everybody gets a glass of wine kind of set on the table. And um, he uh, goes ahead. If you're sticking around, we're just going to cycle you into the next one. Um, he, he's going to look over to them and be like, why are you making fun of each other's mothers? That's... Well, his mother's my mother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other guys. <laughs> I, I don't know my mother, so I don't know what that's like. Oh, that's sad. That's, <laughs> that's really sad. Yeah. Well... You have a mother. You have several. I have an adopted <laughs> you have mother. Oh, you have an adopted. Well, that that's not bad. That's that's good, right? Yeah, that's good. I'm Eric, and he's Eric. <laughs> they both smile. <laughs> oh my god. So your shared mother wasn't very original. Well, uh, we had different fathers. <laughs> I would say that our fathers were um, pretty unoriginal. Were they uh, also named Eric? Eric closest to you says, my name is actually spelled E-R-E-C-H. His is E-R-I-K. Jesus Christ. That doesn't... Can you spell that first one again? So sometimes for differentiation, Erich is fine. You can call me Erich. It sounded like you spelled Erch. No, E-R-E-C-H. A wreck? That... <laughs> <laughs> he kind of does one of these, you know, the little the little cool kid deal. But he um, is very careless. If you'd like, you can go ahead and make a perception check just to kind of catch what cars he had when he looked at them. I don't see shit. Apparently, this wine's really good. <laughs> I haven't even sipped it really yet. <laughs> okay, um, so um, the. Uh, it goes to Eric, uh, and Eric will put um, one coin in and say, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The um, next Eric um, will take a card. Oh, oops. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, there it goes. I figured it out. Uh, He's cheating. He's he goes, cheating again. He goes, shit. And he kind of just like taking the card. You see it's a queen. He kind of... Shit. Too much wine? Eh. <laughs> the dealer says, Milady, hit or full or stay. You'll see Castiel kind of pause for a moment and like think back and say, Stay. Okay. Uh, he says, I will have to hit. I'm trying to do it quickly. He nods his head. And again, you're staying. All right. Dealer meets, and then he will um, reveal, because dealer uh, reveals first. 19. Queen, queen is 10? Yep. All face okay. cards. All face card. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. This game doesn't seem very fair either. <laughs> what do you have? Sixteen. That's what the dealer had last time. I thought that was a good number. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, the queen was the last card that he flipped, so he had the six and the three. So, dealer stays at sixteen or higher. Okay, so then it moves to uh, Elizabeth and uh, Ravik back at the um, cool kids table. Um, I have a question for yeah. Blackjack. If the dealer gets the highest or closest to 21, that means house wins, right? Uh, correct. Okay. Uh, okay, if, okay. Or if it's tied for uh, the if, same. If the house is lower than you, they have to hit. Yeah. Like, okay. They have to hit to try to beat you. Right. Gotcha, but if gotcha. they're tied, the, deal, the house wins. Okay. In okay. this in this instance, because gotcha. uh, Eric and the dealer had sixteen on that last go around. Mm. Okay, so back to the hold'em table. Um, are we both staying here? Or... 
Anybody? I'm going to stay here. Okay, cool. Vyra's going to break up conversation with the lizard man. But that's quite a big sack of coins you got there, man. Yeah, um, well, I uh, did a little bit of work for the, uh, for Apple Eater. Um, and, uh, helped, uh, deal with a problem, um, to help the coast event. <laughs> uh, me and my friends, well, uh, don't really have many of them anymore. Uh, I was the only person who really made it back. <laughs> Apple Jesus. Eater? I have had his... That is a quench, yet. Oh, he'll probably be wandering around here at some point. He usually does. Um, I'll be sure to point him out to me. Oh, no problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, you'll probably see him. He's uh, gonna wear. He's got bright red clothes on. And also eating apples. <laughs> sure, <why not? laughs> across the room. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you Seems stay. Like it pretty well. You stay at your <laughs> table. <laughs> All right, we're going again. What we got? All uh, right. Um, oh, I forgot the uh, shifter. The dealer Ooh. doesn't actually play in Texas Hold'em. Okay. So uh, you see um, them kind of look at their cards, and then as he does, everybody puts in their one, um, and he will go ahead and flip the first three cards. First opportunity to bet. You see uh, the lizard folk, kind of, and um, if you have a passive insight of uh, 12 or higher, uh, you would note that um, he looks worried, with a kind of, ha, <laughs> smiling. Um, but yeah, Bravik, you'd have the first opportunity to um, fold, bet, etc. Raise. Raise, of course. One. Yeah. Raise one. Okay. Shifter looks at you. It's not looking great, but uh, he puts a coin in. Got a stick for the river, I guess. And then, uh, Lose? Um, she'll kind of click her teeth and fold. Okay. Looks uh, not with me on this one. Lizard Folk says, I'll see you. And I'll raise you, too. Call. <laughs> raise again. So two and Shifter kind of... <sighs> I'm out. And he just kind of dismissively throws his cards on the table. Um, so these are just no, out. I should probably put mine out, too. Can if you want. Um, okay. All, all set, gentlemen, the dealer says. How's that looking for everyone? Kind of gesturing to uh, Bravik again. Uh, check. Lizard Get Bravik. it, Bravik. Raise. Puts two more in. Call it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Get it, Bravik. And then the last card. You see his face kind of go, like the lizard folk go, hey, yeah. <laughs> and what do we've got, gentlemen? He flips his cards down, showing that he has a 7 and a 5, which amounts for absolutely <laughs> nothing with the current table. <laughs> and what did you reveal? Jack Ace. Um, so, <laughs> basic, high basically high card wins, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of goes, oh! Mm. Uh, so that would be a total of... <laughs> just to make sure... Uh, one, over what you put in. Um, the shifter put in two. Lose put in two. One. No, I put in one. Oh, you folded so quick. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Um, and then the lizard folk put in six. six. Yeah. Nine. Dang. So nine, nine extra chips. Just uh, I High roller. <laughs> Looking over at Bravrick. You're buying cool. me a drink later, right? <laughs> All right. Um, Jonah? Yeah. You are... Wait, wasn't Astrogoth before me? No. So it's going uh, Tom, Elizabeth, Jonah, Zach, Foxen. But because Foxen basically lumped onto Lose, they're going at the same <laughs> no time. True. Which means they're effectively getting to go twice because there's two of them. Because they're doing the same okay. thing. So I got you. 
So it goes Tom, Elizabeth, Jonah, Zach, Foxen, and then backtrack Fox and Zach, Jonah, so on, so on. Okay. Um, so this looks like uh, a, a, a map of sorts. Yeah. Is this mazes and minotaurs? <laughs> Wasn't that a Tom Hanks film? I don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, don't, was... I don't think that Jonah pulled that out because he knows that film. <laughs> no, so this one is I the know. one that's kind of weakest for me. That, that's Dragon Ante. And again, I don't have a metric for playing that game because gotcha. it would be very hard to put into Roll20, but it's the closest presumption that I have of the lot. So yeah, if you want to go over there, you can. I actually wanted to go over to the Jester. I was just making okay. a little jokey joke. I wanted to check this guy. <laughs> oh, no, not into him. There. He kind of looks down at you. <laughs> Do we uh, play games here? Uh, we play all the games. We play so many games. <laughs> What game? You like games? He flips over, so he's standing on his hands, kind of looking at you. And his face kind of twists, so it's almost like fully, like, face up. Like all the way? Okay. O almost, I'll... but not all the way. Okay, I'll go as much as I can with my head, and then I'll just be like, Yes, let us play a game that you want to play. He reaches down with his foot, which you're now realizing has become unbooted. And he grabs with his foot a cup and then sets it out in front of you. Then he kind of shakes his foot over top of it and you see it split into three cups right before Ooh. your very eyes. He then okay. throws his foot back over himself and kind of lands seated in front of the three cups. And then he goes, ooh, 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 ooh. And as he's doing that, the cups start moving around on the table of their own accord. Okay. You can pick whichever one you want, but whatever you get, you may not want. <laughs> and he starts grabbing on his jester, like, hat, pulling it. Yeah. As soon as he's done, he's going to point to the right one. Okay. Pointing, not the metric. Pick up the cup. Take oh, what you okay. get. He, pull, he picks it up. Okay. And when you flip it over, laying on the table is an egg. Neat. If you reach take out, it. take the egg. It is an egg. Again? <laughs> First time free, second time cost money. <laughs> <laughs> One chip, no. please. He gives him a chip. <laughs> Takes it, looks at it. <laughs> Eats it. <laughs> and then kind of claps his hands. And then gestures down. You see the three cups start moving around. And as he's doing it, he's doing like cartwheels in place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the cups are all moving at the same time. And then he lands so that he's upside down. And he points down with his big toe. Which one do you want this time? All right, I'll grab the middle one and lift it. Okay, four uh, chips kind of splash out as you lift the cup up. Ooh, nice. big winner! Big winner! <laughs> He's clapping with his feet, by the way. <laughs> I'll take the chips, and then I'll ask, what about the third? Ooh, one chip to play again! You have so hey. many now, you can be my friend! <laughs> He's gonna give him two chips. Ooh, hold on! <laughs> <laughs> reaches down to the three cups, smashes them into one cup, and then pulls his hands out from it, and there are now five cups. He then Ooh. kind of starts doing like a pirouette on the table, and the cups start spinning around like randomly, and then he kind of stops and like bow gestures at it. You pick! You pay two, you get two! So, from left to right, one, one being through left. five. Just one through five, oh, yeah. Okay, alright. Alright. I'll Le do left is two. one, right is five. Yeah, I'll do two and four. Okay. You pick up two, and you get another egg. Nice. And then four, you pick and pull it open, and inside there's a ticket that kind of just falls to the ground. Like, it, when you pick it up, it almost looks like there's nothing at first, and then a ticket kind of descends and hits the table. Hmm. 
pretty good winnings. Not the best, but definitely nice. Try again, try again. Or is your night on ice? <laughs> that ticket probably takes you to the egg store. <laughs> if you, <laughs> it's for a card. It's a coupon for a card. No, I'll it's... give. I'll give him another one. If you look at the <laughs> ticket, it says yeah. "Buy one, get one free." Drinks at the bar, the beach nice. whale. <laughs> okay, okay. I will put. I will give him one more chip. Shifts it back to three cups. All right, middle one. Okay. Um, okay. So when you pull up the middle one, ten chips fall out. Fuck yeah, dude. Oh, that puts me in sixteen. I'm rich, bitch. Okay. You should give him sixteen chips and pick like sixteen hey, cups out of thirty. <laughs> Just make John process all that. No, oh, God, I will. <laughs> I, I will tell you there's a hard tab uh, cap at 10. <laughs> I give him 16 chips. No. 16? 16? Fuck that shit, you model and then he just Then he just cartwheels off the fucking boat into the night never to be seen. Thank you. Fuck you! So. <laughs> I'm gonna have nightmares tonight about this thing. So Orlandis is going to step up, or stand up after winning. Um, he's going to say, uh, It was good playing with you. I am Orlandis. And he reaches out for a handshake, or foot shake, whatever. Yeah, looks like at the current <laughs> point you'd be getting a foot. He uh, taps your foot away, like kind of like almost like dismissively. No, no, we are friends. Hugs is what we do. And he wraps his legs around your shoulders <laughs> and pulls you into his crotch. <laughs> so ah! and then his people them. show affection by making you sniff their taint <laughs> Which, you know what what the fuck are we doing strangely doesn't smell terrible that's great. That's like, great. You know he that's won. Great. He, no, just, he, well, just, he just stunned, kind of just the, taps his ass like the whole ass gesture when you hug him as weird as the hug may be, smells like cotton candy. Oh my God. Wait. The whole guy. The whole guy smells like cotton candy. <laughs> and he also has like a pillow-like embrace. It's like you're being hugged by a pillow. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on to Zach. <laughs> Very magical. I don't know if I want to participate anymore after that. <laughs> Just hide under a table. <laughs> I don't blame you. This place is got two eggs, place. baby. Oh god, I'm sorry, clown. Oh, <laughs> he's not a clown. He's a jester. Jester's okay. I, I, yeah, it's. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm moderately uncomfortable. It's fine. You're okay. Okay, okay. he he fucks right off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but are the eggs boiled? No, or are they just raw eggs. They are raw, raw eggs. eggs. Oh my god. Okay. And if you ask the jester where they came from, ah, oh, they are ethically sourced from the town of Egged. The south of here. I don't think that was ethically sourced at all. <laughs> well, wait, <I'm, laughs> he doesn't know any better. <laughs> I do. Though. He doesn't know they were demon chickens. Shut up. This I place, know. this place isn't safe, y'all. <laughs> so what is um, Astrogoth doing? Uh, I imagine after whatever that was leaves, um, I would probably go over to Orlandis and relay well, the information. If you want to throw down some bets with him, because so, I did let Orlandis do three. Like, if you want to, I won't. I won't go. No, over. I am. I'm avoiding that thing. Well, I was gonna say I won't go over the top. I won't like. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. This will be after. Like, I purposely waited until he left in Orlando before Orlandis had probably gotten up and walked away, so I could come over and be like, "Hey, what's up?" To Orlandis. Yes. Okay. We and I will tell Orlandis that. There are two of the... What did you call them again? The Sea Lords? Uh, Masters of the Sea. Masters of the Sea. Um, here, which is a rarity, and that there's generally some bad blood between them in 
that there's two individuals, one by the name of Apple Eater and the other of Hadrian, that might be worth getting information on. I know of Hadrian, um, thanks to uh, Anild, but I did not know Apple Eater. And you say there is bad blood between them. That's what one of the uh, lizard men told me. He said that he'd been working with them and that he's surprised that they're both here, given that there's bad blood between them. Mm. Are they here at the casino? or? Don't see I, I imagine so. I would guess that they're probably going to be at the table where they... the uh, the really rich blood table. Or it could be that ominous figure on that token that just appeared on this, the southern door right there. So you would note a couple of things are happening as you two are kind of conversing. You would see that your allies are like in the midst of um, their activities. You would see that it looks like Castia is kind of taking to talking to these two gentlemen who aren't, they're not twins. One's younger, one's older, but they definitely have like similar hair and features. There's definitely some sort of relationship there. Uh, but they seem to be having a good time. You would see Lose and Ravik absolutely taking this fucking lizard folk for a ride. Um, and everybody else you kind of see present throughout the space. Um, Orlando says you're kind of, you know, taking in everything. You would see that coming up the, um, the ramp um, is the man you saw outside of the commerce location. Um, and almost identical timing like as if it were kind of like inspired by it uh you would see <laughs> another man of importance appear outside of or just kind of come through the door behind the blackjack table and step out so we've discussed hadrian before we know what hadrian looks like um through still... some discussion with hanel you would know that the head that he carries around is his brother his brother is named nydra Adrian mm -hmm. built backwards. Um, and again, showing you those folks so we understand. And I'm going to shift the music too because we're getting to a less gamey and a bit more serious -y kind of uh, bit of it, but not so serious that we can't do a little bit of levity. Okay, cool. Um, so, Hadrian and Nitra. And this other individual who you see pop out looks like he works here. Um, you see that he is a uh, very uh, updone individual wearing just lavish bright reds, golds, yellows. He's got like uh, what appears to be kind of like a dark minx fur on his coat, um, rings on all of his fingers, or maybe one or two are naked. Uh, he has like jewelry all about his body, um, ginger hair, uh, beard, um, and kind of like loosely coming out of his big fluffy cap. Um, you'd also notice that his face is covered with like potches, like he's very potch marked, and there appears mm -hmm. to be a very large red growth on the right side of his face that's kind of like right over like his mouth. Like it's a big, just bulbous looking swell of a very infected looking cyst or something. And, uh, yeah, um, that's what he looks like. Um, okay. but he, he steps out from behind the uh, blackjack table, places his shoulder on the uh, dealer at your table, Castia, and says, everything going all right? Yeah, it's going good. He nods, great, great. Kind of starts making his way into the area to kind of carouse. Um, Hadrian, having been let on, walks over to the very first table he's afforded and sits. Uh, Orlandis and Astrogoth, since you two are watching him as he kind of comes up onto the scene, you notice he sits, disinterestedly throws a couple of uh, chips onto the table, and then seems to be staring across the uh, room over at this tabaxi. Like, it is really not hard to determine who he's looking at. Didn't we meet him before? The captain? In the old Friday game? Maybe. No, 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 the cat. The captain? Yeah. 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah, the captain. The last one, yeah. Not Catten, Captain. 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 Okay. Whose marker is this? I don't know. It's been there. What forever. This 5.1 square feet marker. Oh, I don't know. That I don't see it's it. circled with yellow, so that must be you. Why can't I get rid of it? I don't know. Do the do the delete thingy. Do you have to change the layer you're on? No, that shouldn't be it. I was actually wondering who did it. It's apparently me, but it's not on my master map. Can you, um, like, on the white circle, like, if you scroll in, um, it gives me the undo option, but it doesn't do anything whenever I do that. It might do something for you. No, it's being goofy. I don't know that. Goofy? I don't know what it is. It's uh, all Jonah's fault. Sorry, y'all. Okay, well, that's just going to remain there. What remains? That 5.1. Wait a minute. <laughs> so, that being the setup, I'm dropping the table out of the gambling cycle. Um, if we all agree to go back into the gambling cycle, we can. But if you want to, again, keeping in mind, the representation of us playing a hand of cards should kind of be equivalent to a couple of hands being played and you maintaining kind of that average at where you're at. I want to use my ticket. Yeah, go for it. So you head up to okay. the bar. Ashergoth, do you go with him up to the bar or do you remain uh, here? Sure. We can go up to the bar. Okay. Castia, um, is there anything you're investigating here situation-wise? Like, are you paying attention to the... Newcomers. I would assume the tone of the room kind of changed a little bit. No, no? nobody seems to have okay. noticed. I think she would probably be keeping an eye on the guy that emerged and is kind of running things and maybe lean over to Eric and Arek and ask, ask who, who is that? Strangely, as you kind of are looking at him, he walks around the Eric's kind of patting them on the shoulder, walks up to you. Hello, miss. I don't think I've had the pleasure. Raises his I... hand out to kind of, like, take your hand. Castillo will, like, stare at it for a second, and then she'll remember the nephew outside of the house that was really awkward when she didn't offer her hand and will offer her hand this time. He'll kind of lean in and kind of seemingly kind of uh, very cognizant of the fact that he has a massive weird growth on his face um, kind of moves his head to the side and kind of gives a light kiss on the back of your hand welcome to the bichuel my accent's going to change like 30 times in the whole process of this I've already <laughs> lost the you Scottish accent <laughs> I've already lost the Scottish accent I wanted and now it's back to Cockney and everyone sounds the same <laughs> That's what isn't we're it? doing, isn't, isn't it? it? <laughs> Spice Girls forever. Have you, has everyone been able to help you with everything you need? Have you been having a good time? My voice changed again, but he, this is what we're sticking with. It's easiest. Yeah, right. I'm not very good at these games, but... Oh. Well, um, if I find some time, perhaps I can um, show you how to better manipulate the cards. Yeah, is, that, is that allowed? He must not mean manipulate in a bad sense, Eric says. That's right, Eric. Oh, then, of course, yes, yeah. Just knowing when to call, when to hit, when to stay. He smiles and kind of prances off. And it seems like he specifically moves to the center of the room and kind of stops at there. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason. He likes roulette. Yeah, Castillo will keep an eye on yeah, you definitely him in between rounds. Realize that he seems to be kind of watching the newcomer and the cat man. Oh, strategic placement.
Okay. So, um, Lose and Braddock, are you none the wiser and are continuing to focus on the game, or are you kind of trying to be attentive? Um, I, I think Braddock having... What was that? Sorry. He said Braddock would be attentive. You'd probably see him come out of the room. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lose would, knowing who Hadrian is, um, or being aware of who Hadrian is would uh, kind of keep her eye on him, um, but still playing. Okay. So, um, as the night continues, it does seem like there's a tense situation there. Orlandis, you get up to the uh, bar, same with Astrogoth, and you kind of order the drinks. Um, uh, he's, yeah. he's AFK for a second. No worries. Yeah. I'm just saying that's that's what's happening. Um, you're kind of up there, kind of watching down um, as to what's going on. Um, and uh, Lo say you're at where you're at. Um, yeah. And you see, okay, you're going to just do that to me. All right. Little, little baddie. Just try to climb me like a tree. Oh, no. Um, the uh, man we know as Hadrian, places what you have all come to determine is a human head on the table, which gives, like, the the winter elf who's at the table... Oh, okay. <laughs> Does he see the cat? Is that what's happening? Like, he sees the cat? Yeah. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> I'm not eating that cat. Um, he's soft today. Um, so, uh, the, the Winter Elf is kind of, like, like, gasp, like, distraught, but the, uh, Githyanki is kind of, uh, oh, <laughs> kind of interested in that. Um. A marriage proposal? <laughs> the dealer says, um, chips and pieces only, please. Um, and, uh, Hadrian kind of, like, taps the head, which then seems to start moving and coming to life then floats up off the table, and as it does so, kind of keeping its uh, head top up, out of the neck spill viscera, which appears to be like the intestinal tract, or like the esophagus, lungs, and a bit of the intestinal tract of a person that just drops out from underneath the head. The head then starts floating across the room towards the tabaxi. This obviously gets a lot of Ah! and like screams but for whatever reason the tabaxi does not seem to like be afraid scared or anything just kind of stands up and looks at the approaching creature with kind of like a nose up in the air kind of like staring down his nose kind of look They then start talking in a very strange language. The two of them. The floating head and the cat man. Um, Castia will lean over to one of the Eric's and be like, Have I had too much wine? Cassia, maybe you have, because as they're talking, it seems to be a language you understand. And you hear the creature say, you know this isn't your place. This is our territory. And the captain, or the cat man, says, I am simply passing through. I mean no ill will. I will be on my way in the morrow. The floating head replies, not acceptable. You will pay dues determined by us or you will leave immediately the tabaxi kind of shakes his head then I will leave after clearing my charges and kind of swipes a bunch of uh, chips off the table and starts making his way around the penangolin um, heading towards the door it slowly follows behind him creepily everyone very much invested in this like turn of events, and the tabaxi leaves after the fashion. The head floats back over to Hadrian, 
re-ingests its guts and then floats back down to his lap. It doesn't seem like the viscera that came out of him was wet or slick or like gross. And there wasn't like drippage or anything. It just <laughs> kind of almost like uh, I'd say it had like the same consistency as like a sausage that would have been in your like in, in your your refrigerator, you know. Gross. I don't know that that makes it better. Like not like a not like one with like a bunch of sausage juice on it or anything. Just like a. <laughs> I still don't think that makes it any better. It really doesn't. <laughs> A nice, <laughs> chilled, vaguely firm sausage. What's so? Why did you have to say it that way, Tom? Mmm, sausage juice. God. You oh, you made a dick joke. Oh. I didn't get it at first. There's a lot of surgery opportunities for a surgeon here. Put that head back on something, you know, fix the face thing. There's... The tabaxi leaves. The tabaxi leaves. Um, you would see that the event kind of goes by without issue, but then um, maybe a few beats later, the uh, person you know as Apple Eater kind of walks over and sits next to Hadrian. Bravik, you're the only one close enough in earshot to hear that they're kind of talking can't, um, and you kind of get the gist, but you're not like full-on can't talker. But it definitely seems that... Um, Hadrian, kind of upset, stands up. You can't remain neutral and in common, says you can't remain neutral forever. Tell your master that. And turns and walks away as well. This would be like maybe two, three minutes after the tabaxi left. And then Hadrian and Nigra leave. So Hadrian told Apple Eater that he can't remain neutral? They had some sh very short conversation in Thieves' Cant, which Bravik was able to kind of hear, but because Bravik is not like a full-on thief, wasn't able to kind of understand everything. Definitely the beats were... Um, Apple Eater was being threatening. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, that, that would definitely be something Bravik would pick up. But then Hadrian stood up and loud enough for everyone to kind of hear if they were listening, said, you can't remain neutral forever. Tell your Don't master you. that. And then left. They seem friendly. The uh, shifter kind of looks at you. Huh? Kind of looking down at his cards. Oh, nothing. Oh. Lizard folk says, oh, that was weird. Look kind of tasty, though. <laughs> I wonder if you could saute it, cook it up real nice. wonder if the juices would stay in there or not. I bet it tastes like saute. <laughs> oh, my God. A nice, firm sausage. What do you know about nice, firm sausages? <laughs> Fucking Flathill runs in. <laughs> what have you been teaching her, Orlandis? <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, from up above uh, at the bar, Orlandis and Astragoth, all you saw was the head was a penangolin, it talked to the cat, the cat left, and then the cat, or the, the man with the, the second head was forced out by the other thing. Fox, you're getting some weird feedback from you, my guy. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Apple Eater remains seated there for a beat. I have a coupon or a ticket. Of course. Buy yeah, one, get one free. Does that apply to any drink or the cheapest? She uh, pulls it and kind of points at the ticket in like in very fine print. Uh, it says nothing from the top shelf. Hmm. But everything that else is, is fine. fine. Give me one from the middle shelf. Dealer's yeah. choice. You're parning? Uh, probably a nice whiskey, she says. Kind of musters a couple of glasses, sets them down in front of you. Um, two stiff drinks. 
How much? Um, it's going to be uh, five silver pieces. Oh, I think it's pretty reasonable. We're not trying to rob. Um, we're not trying to rob you. He said, "Not here. <laughs> Everywhere else." <laughs> she smiles. <laughs> I'll give her a chip. Okay. And keep the change for the tip. Very generous. Thank you so much. And then he gives one to Astragoth. Okay. Astragoth is obviously a bit flushed from the two drinks he's already had. <laughs> but yep. He, uh, I'm assuming, takes the third one. Um, if so, do me a favor and roll a constitution saving throw. Astragoth. I'm so sorry. Sure, why not? Let's make it, let's make it. Hey, no, it's fine. No, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't to become sick. This is to see if you're drunk or not. And yeah, so you'd basically be tipsy. And so the way I rule tipsy in my game is very simple. It's the poisoned condition. So okay. you're not technically poisoned, but you suffer the effects of that condition. Astragoth. Oh, alcohol is poison. It's fine. I mean, true. Yes. <laughs> but, right. Astragoth, do you wish to play a game? Or... Do you want to meet up with our fellows? Should probably make sure everyone's okay. <laughs> Inspiration, you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> we go. We join up with the crew. Okay. So I'm assuming Lose and Vravik are kind of settled in their table. Vravik and Lose are not moving towards Apple Eater and that beat where he's seated kind of by himself. You're muted. Oh, no. Nah. You're Is good. That gone? Right. Yeah, Brav is going to go kind of sit next to him. Okay. He uh, gives you a look. <sighs> Are you, what, an envoy for another one of these masters? I'm my own master. Great. Good. Preferred. You enjoying it here? Oh, yes. Great. If there's anything you need, just let me know. I did want to ask, but what is that about? Well, obviously information is going to come at a price. And since we're just dealing very casually here, I'll start by getting some information from you. Who are you? And why do you want to know? And Bravik Longmaster. <laughs> Assassin. <laughs> if, you need, if you need my services. And what services would those be? Oh, I'm sure someone of your caliber has enemies that need to be taken out. Everybody has enemies they need taken out in this world. Um, but I get the cut of your chip. I, unfortunately, have no angles on either individual who left so promptly and uh, vitriolically this evening. Um, Hadrian is a ancient thing that I have no aims on. That would be the man with the floating head for a brother. And uh, the captain is nice enough and has allowed for several people in sword break here to maintain an air of dignity and a sense of being um, that has not been afforded to them since this war has broken out. So I have no interest in tangling with either of them. I just really wish they would not bring their turf battles to my doorstep, or rather my master's doorstep as I'm sure you so quaintly heard him say. Are you not the owner of this establishment? I am not. Oh. But that's all I've got to say on the matter. Unfortunately, um, the master uh, very much desires to maintain his privacy. Understandable. So, I must be Orlandis um, and uh, Astrogoth are kind of on their way down at this point, and uh, Apple Eater will say, I must be um, back to the floor. Um, thanks for the conversation and uh, Log Whisker, I will keep your name in mind if... Um, your services are required for rendering. Stands up and kind of briskly walks in their direction. 
uh, seems to stop kind of at the foot of the steps, waiting for you to kind of pass him by so he can make his way up the steps. While passing him, Orlandis is going to do a, a, like, slight bow for respect. He nods his head and say, Apologies, I have not met you um, as of yet, a Parnan dignitary and such fine regalia with a associate as splendidly dressed and quite known. Um, very interesting to see you here at my establishment, um, if you don't mind. Your name? I am Orlandis uh, Aler. He reaches out his hand for a handshake. Shakes it. And of course, Astrogoth the Minstrel. You bet. Interesting. Great to have you both. Um, we unfortunately don't have much in the manner of entertainments here. Uh, most folks prefer to drink and give us money in silence. Uh, <laughs> Could you use some entertainment for the night? There would be nowhere for them to set up. Um, it's quite all right. Um, in fact, we would prefer without the disturbances. But um, what brings you to the whale? Well, we are traveling um, to... forgot the damn name again. Uh, Penford. Penford, thank you. Um, and this is one of the... Ah, right. Groups. The privateer vessel. Is that right? Yes. Interesting. So, it's your hope to pass through the little blockade of pirates and at sea brigands Hadrian has so remarkably set up off coast? Unfortunately, yes. I do not envy you. He is quite the demon when it comes to robbing people of their money. I don't think the seas will bar him from his capacities. There is no way to avoid this. Not that would come cheaply. And what exactly would it cost? <laughs> You're asking for what? Um, protection? Or smuggling? Safe. Safe passage. You have your ship? Yes. I will have to get back to you. Very interesting inquiry. You are a strange one, from what I've been able to muster about you. And I've heard that before. Your reputation, gesturing towards Astrogoth, precedes you. An interesting storyteller and song player coming down the coast and disappearing off the face of, of the earth when they made their way into Anundia. She gets stuck in, what, Cardend or something? Yes, that's accurate. Seems like a fate that's befallen quite a few folks. In fact, it um, happened to the previous owner of your very ship. He smiles. His uh, unfortunate passing. It was oh, a I sad thing. I did not know he had slipped this mortal coil. A good bit of information to have. Like I said, I do need to step away for just a moment to um, get some more information regarding your request. I assure you, um, I c potentially could muster a means for you to travel safely to mm. Penford, but it will cost you not just a matter of fiduciary agreements, but also diplomatic ones as well. Mm. I could see about that. I honestly do not know the state of affairs in my home. It has been quite some time. Well, 
the state of your home is not a terribly important matter. Penford is more important to us, and since it seems that you are working for the Duchy of Lavidia, based on your paperwork, we could definitely use someone like you to represent our interests in Penford. That could help, actually, both of us. We'll see if my mask, if I can agree upon it. You see him almost slip, <laughs> and then he kind of walks away, and he will kind of enter into this door instead of going up. Okay. All right. One more round of gambling, and then he'll come back. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll start with um, Tom. <laughs> Is Cassius still playing blackjack? Okay. <laughs> I don't like this game. Stays. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm actually. God. I'm actually gonna drink my potion of advantage. Okay. So you have advantage Just on in case. Of... Yeah. In the next hour. Got it. Um, okay, so, uh, what do you got? Uh, I'll, I'll stand. Uh, we got, um, hit, hold, stand, hit, we got a baby cat. Little cat? And we got a stand. Okay, so the um, Eric to the right, most of you, he folds, and they put in a total of. Th oh, the other guy puts in a total of two on top of what he had. If you stay in, you have to put two in as well, even though he hit to do it, and then he's going to drop out. Uh, 17 and the dealer having to play along as well will pull out 16. What do you got? This is good, right? I just see the 10. But, oh, yeah. Ooh. Okay. So Ooh. This is good? Dealer had to match, so uh, Eric directly next to you put in a total of four because. Yeah, and then one, so five, and then the dealer had to match, so four. So you would make a total of nine tokens. All right. God, Dorian! Yeah, I think I get it. <laughs> and um, Orlandis and Astragoth, you two are kind of just waiting, milling about, not taking a seat at any of the tables, right? Mm -mm. Well, Orlandis is an Astrogoth can if he wants. Yeah, he can do whatever he wants. He's his own bugbear. I... I want to make... I, I don't know if I want to do something or not. I want to leave it up to chance, given that I'm slightly inebriated. What do you think... What do you want me to roll for that? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Um, roll a... One, two, okay, but do you think you would end up at any of the higher levels, or is your chance still kind of locked down to the floor you're on? Being drunk. Um, here, here's what I'm thinking. If I succeed on this, then it will. I'll continue to play it cool and probably stay down here. If I fail, I kind of want to see what this guy's deal was staring at me while I was up there. And he'd probably be a little confrontational about it. Okay, so if you succeed, um, you're you're cool. If you, f what are you doing? Treat. Trying to print. No, he has done a bad thing. A very, uh -oh. very bad thing. Is he trying to counterfeit money with your printer? No, he's trying <laughs> that to... Would make sense, he's trying to climb up onto my miniature shelf, which means he's trying to climb up to the ceiling. No. Like, he wants to be a spider cat. And I don't know where my water bottle went to spray him right in his fucking face. Dobby is a free elf. So... <laughs> <laughs> Dobby can climb to the ceiling. So one second, I have to get up, actually. <laughs> Master has given Dobby a suck. 
Dobby no, is no, in, no, in, no, 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 no. In this case, <laughs> Master has given Dobby some soup. <laughs> he is soup. I can't give that him. That is. Soup. Yeah, Aww. he's potato soup. He's a potato soup? That's some pretty good soup. Master has given Dobby you a printer. You see him? He's, he's a <laughs> mashed potato boy, and he's soup. <laughs> he's a matash, matashed potato. Um, okay, so roll a wisdom saving throw. Again, you have... Um, oh. No penalties oh. on the save, I don't think, for poison. Let me double check. Poison. So close. Oh, why did I roll constitution? Oh, right, the C, yeah. That was earlier when you were drunk. Well, attack or rolls and ability drunk. checks on saving throw. So you could spend your inspiration to succeed, or you can go with a failure. I don't want to deviate the group from what we're trying to no, do. No, 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 it's okay. no. no, no. Do Live your you life. You haven't had a lot of time in the limelight. Go for it. Yeah. Whatever you want. And you said it was a gift, a gift to Rai? Yeah, but again, I was going to say, if you fail, because um, failure would have been going to a tables or potentially confronting him, right? That's I heard that right? No, it was. I was thinking that if I succeeded, I'd, I'd keep my cool and just kind of brush it off and remain down here. Failure would be like, why the heck was that guy staring at got me? Got it, got it, got it. Like he, like he knows me. Okay. So then, yeah. I could tell he wasn't looking at my outfit. He was looking at me. You go back up there and... <laughs> and, and, and... <laughs> just tell me how you lead it up, because um, since you walked away, he when you're coming back up the stairs, which are kind of like you know right behind him, basically, he's not looking at you, so you're kind of catching him from behind if you want. No, I no, I'll come around. Okay, he kind of looks over to you and sees you, and kind of like locks on interest again. I'm gonna stare him right in the eyes, and I'm gonna go. Do you know me? I do. I do not. <laughs> That's not to say I don't wish to get to know you. Oh. <laughs> then why are you staring at me like you do? Because you're. I can tell you're not looking at my outfit. You're looking at me, you're and cool. I wear the outfit to distract from that. You're gorgeous, he says. Well, thank you. I have not seen quite as beautiful a being since my unfortunate arrival here in these parts. And to be honest, you are a welcome diversion from my normal sights. I'll just look at the people that he's sitting at the table with and then kind of chuckle after I see, I see what they all look like. There's three goblins, and they look like rough-and-tumble goblins that have had, like, kind of, like, silk fabric just kind of cut and put on them. And it's, like, glued to them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, they just, like, slapped it on, like, in leather straps or whatever. Yeah, like, hot glue. Dobby guns. gave me a... Or, Master gave Dobby a silk strip. <laughs> The, <laughs> the woman that appears to be with them at the table, she you don't know if she's with them or not, or if even if the kids are right. Is that, is that the one at, like, 12 o'clock? Yeah, yeah. Um, she is a drow elf. Now, as we've discussed before, possibly in this game, possibly not, drow elves in my campaign setting are not murderous psychopaths. Um, and, like, they're not, you know, horrible, kind of weird, like... I mean... Masochists or whatever. Instead, drow elves went under uh, the earth um, and became subterranean uh, due in part to the fact that they wish to... What is happening, Fox? And I keep on getting feedback. It's burning my ears off. <sighs> Why? Um, <laughs> drow elves, they wish to enter into dreaming states instead of the Feywild. They remove themselves from their connection to the Shazas so that they can form their own realities. And in these realities, these dreamings, they kind of form enclaves that are basically just filled with people who go to sleep. And then they all join a unified dream together, which they work to make and manifest. And then they have 
people who stay on the outside who watch over these dreamings. And then they have envoys who pass between these places. And then there's some people who just remove themselves from the dreaming and enter into the real world to you know, traffic. Um, like, ally with others, do, you know, normal merchantary stuff. Traffic, probably not the greatest word to real world context, but I mean, like, traffic goods deliver. Right, I know what you mean. Muggle. For some reason, I thought they had Australian accents, but I guess... I'm no, 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 that was a joke. That was a joke. Because <laughs> yeah, they're from down under. Ha ha ha. But, but uh... Owl deep. She, um... You're not sure whether or not she's with them or not. Or if the Githzerai is with the goblins or not. The for sure part, though, is the goblins are together. They are having a great fucking time. I can imagine they probably don't get out often. Yeah, there's at least, you know, two of the golden cups in front of each of them. Um, I think three in front of the uh, one to the far north there. But uh, he says, do you mind if I accompany you? With whatever you're doing this evening. Or if I'm being too forward, I can, of course, just continue... Um, eerily watching you from a distance. <laughs> I'll be back. Uh, now the question, how drunk is he? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be back. He nods. Okay. And I, I just imagine him kind of walking back downstairs going, that was not what I thought it was. <laughs> Did anyone look at John when he said it? <laughs> it was that's amusing. That's the part that fucking killed me. Yeah, that's why it took me a little while to respond because I was cracking up over here. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, he definitely uh, oh. seemed to be uh, interested in Astrogoth. Um, you would have noticed being kind of drunk like your drunk sense definitely noticed that the goblins probably weren't with him but the drow seemed to be paying attention to the conversation and again you don't know if it's just because you're drunk or not but you're pretty sure she had the same kind of eyes on you during that conversation that he did so you're just like in this weird state of like does everybody want to fuck astrogoth <laughs> i mean it wouldn't be the first time yeah and it's the type of thing where it's the in the game where if you play your cards right with the persuasion rolls, you get to sleep with everybody. <laughs> or if you play cards, actual cards, right in this session. Um, That's right. <laughs> so, um, I think everybody has gotten the last hand. Oh, no, sorry. Um, it would go to Elizabeth slash Foxen. So, mm -hmm. one more go of it. Yeah, let's go. I think Astrogoths should go for it. Absolutely, whatever you want to do, but yeah, again, I'm just laying out the scene, don't be... Hit the jackpot, so to speak. Giggity. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you make me begin a quest to catch them all and then have them stay on the boat, me and my brothel? <laughs> <laughs> gonna come out with a harem i've got all my sailors with me um so <laughs> it goes to Fantastic. the you, you bid your one and then the flaw mm -hmm. and boop -doop. that's what's revealed um the lizard folk kind of nodding his head mm. yeah looks down at his pile and, uh... Oh, you got a good one. You can see that he's kind of tired looking, but he seems to kind of got, like, a smile on his face. And he grabs ten and puts them in. <laughs> and looks at... Seems to be looking at Ravik, like... <laughs> can I do an inside check? I call it bluff. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and make an inside check. Again, Insight doesn't tell you whether he's lying or not. 
but I will Please. give you some notifications as to what he's kind of vibing with. Uh, he seems confident. Whether or not there's a false sense of confidence or not, you're not sure, but he, he, he does definitely seems to be pushing a vibe of confidence. So, um, actually, sorry, he wouldn't have gone first, but he seems to have cut off the bidding and kind of pushed the money forward very suddenly, breaking Ooh, the line. Very the, confident. The dealer almost looks to Ravik, the shifter, and Lose as if, like, is that okay? Um, she kind of gives a nod. All right. Um, but right. she's also going to fold. <laughs> 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 she just kind of folds and like, I don't think my my luck's with me anymore. Don't worry, I'll teach you how to play cards from another... <laughs> <laughs> I think so, I'm going to go get a drink. She says that she's juggling all the coin. <laughs> right. Um, but she's gonna fold, put her cards on the table, and slide the chip in. Grab it. And then get up and go get a drink. No risk, no reward, I'll call. Alright. You put ten down. Can you put ten in, or no? Yeah, I got ten. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're all in, then. Back. Oh, okay. Okay. So that means that um, yeah, he can't bet. He can't bet anymore. No, I'm not. I'm not all in. Oh, sorry, you're not all in. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Thank you, thank you. Okay, then the shifter will nod his head and say, "Call," and put ten in. And the river. Thing. Could have had at least one. If Ravik has a seven, he's doing great right here. Yeah, that is a um, yeah. interesting and dangerous board. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of options. If he has a seven, is that a flush? No, it's a yeah. straight. Yeah. Straight. Okay. Straight, straight flush would be if they're all the same. Yeah, flush yeah. means same color. Yeah. There's a flush draw on the board. Somebody could have. Like a yeah, a seven and a nine, and beat somebody with just seven. There's a lot of options. Mm -hmm. well, like it. Check. The lizard, the lizard folk, takes another ten out of his big bag. Oh my god! And puts it down. Oh, he is going in. Oh, I'm all in then. <laughs> the uh, I'm the, bluff. <laughs> the shifter looks at it, and he looks at his uh, six remaining. All in. Oh shit! It's the last card. That's the last card. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This is this is tense. If it's a king. I'm gonna be a five, and six, or seven. What the heck? No, what? what? Why does it have shuffle as a button? Oh, oh what's oh, happening? Bigger. There is no fifth card. The boat explodes. <laughs> Ravik wins. Find out what happens next the week on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do this the fairest way I know how because of what's happened here. Um, so, Tom, I am sending you one card and then just take the card and put it on the table. Try to draw uh, from a deck with no more cards. What do you mean? With yeah, no probably more? exhausted from all the other games. I recalled them all. I don't know how it works. Okay, well then, oh, you know what I need? Another deck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have a deck of many things if you need a if you need a card. <laughs> just slips that in there on the last, just on top, like... <laughs> Chaos. I got Ooh, two aces and a dragon! <laughs> just takes that card and sets it on the top. Like, okay, hey, there. I figured it out. Eight, four, five, six. Ooh. You have a seven, you win. You see... There's Ooh. a flush. Yeah, there's... You see um, the shifter's face kind of like like waiting for it, waiting for it, and it flips and he kind of, Ugh. And then you see <laughs> the uh, lizard folk just kind of, kind of like nervous smile. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven is the needed card. Uh, otherwise, 
It's or two. Um, so the shifter will play his out. He's got a three and a king. He was kind of hoping for the nine, or, or sorry, the seven. Um, and then um, the uh, lizard folk has a pair of nines. Ooh. Yep, I lost. I got a pair. I got a six and a queen. <laughs> pair of sixes. Yep. Damn, that was tense. The lizard folk grinning. I won? I won? <laughs> and takes all the coin in. Very oh happy. <laughs> um, excited. And, How much uh, is that? Like 40? Uh, it's all of fucking Vravix. Vravix out. Yeah, I have 13. <laughs> so um, he kind of like takes all of the uh, coin very happily and um, seems to cash out. Like kind of like, you know, get up and kind of like move to cash out. And uh, as he's kind of walking past um, the shifter, he uh, places um, a couple of, uh, like, you know, three chips down. And as he's walking past Ravik, he puts down, like, just he's kind of just reaching into his bag, sets down, roll a d4. Four. Two. <laughs> he grabs two chips at random and sets them out in front of you. Thanks for playing. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're in town uh, for a while... Uh, come see me. And uh, he names off an address, which I'll uh, mark when we get back into Sword Break eventually. All right, so reach out and shake his hand. <laughs> he'll, sh he'll shake it very heartily. He seems to kind of be very excited uh, about the situation. Uh, no, but you, the fellow, was <laughs> you can also tell he got kind of tired, like towards the end. Um, he's up past his bed. I now. too often get tired after um, winning hundreds of gold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, most people should like that'd be the smarter way of going about it but the problem is is they don't and they keep he, he 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 did the full-on midwest <laughs> well <laughs> it's about time <laughs> about that time about time for me to be hitting the old dusty trail <laughs> i like your hat you know if i was an asshole i would i would just follow him out and be <laughs> kill him leave him in the jungle <laughs> Like, I mean, he got a whole bag of gold now. It's a couple it's, thousand gold in his pocket. It's kind of still a possibility. <laughs> He's right out where, there. Where'd Lose go? <laughs> there is a long, dark trail. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> gonna, I was going to nod and like, get your ass <laughs> You're the traitor. Go get our money back. <laughs> I'm the traitor? Treasurer. Treasurer. I was like, I'm the traitor. Reader. Traitor. What are you talking about? So, um, the oh. uh, guy will come back up looking for Orlandis. Uh, walks over to you and says, uh, you um, came here with a bit of your crew? Yes. Um, some of them are, are still playing games. Uh, and uh, the, there is one there at the front, uh, the rat folk. Um, that one over there, the one that looks a little confused. Um, and uh, the red-headed uh, elven woman. Well, if you folks are interested... I'd like to take you to meet with somebody regarding your trip to Penford. Okay, let me gather all of them. Is Astrogoth is nearby, right? Yeah. So? Okay. Astrogoth, can you get Lose at the bar, please? Uh, yes! Okay. He says, knowing that he'll have to literally walk by the people he said the, that he would be back for. <laughs> oh no, that laugh. <laughs> that's, I'll gather Robert could cast you. <laughs> that's true. Um, and they, they definitely see you. You're welcome. Do you Classic do you? Wingman I, I Orlando. I your guns and walk away. Finger guns and walk away. Um, I need just you. don't accidentally fire off an eldritch blast. 
<laughs> not a not a fear, not a possibility. But I need you to do me a favor and just make a raw charisma check. Sure. <laughs> so, sufficient with a fourteen. It seems that they understand, um, or he understands. Like he's not. He he doesn't seem to be kind of crestfallen. Like there's like a slight kind of you know air of sadness for a moment but then he kind of turns his attention away after the finger guns after giving you kind of like a salute okay I might still come back for him he might still <laughs> young we'll see so I just I just have a job to do Lose if you would please escort me downstairs the stairs are kind of scary right now <laughs> what are you going to go on a drink yeah how do I stairs? But she'll, <laughs> but she'll uh, turn around and go down with him. Crazy. Um, okay, so you... Oh my god, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, they're still sitting there. They're still seeing people across the bar and really digging their vibe. You gotta be careful with what you say. <laughs> so, Orlando will get Castia and then go down to Ravik and bring him This gambling them. thing is really great. <laughs> Uh, you are doing good. Apple Eater will lead you into the ship the way he originally came up. Um, when he leads you inside of that space, you are brought into um, what appears to be um, a very kind of messy room. A very, very messy room. Um, and it almost seems like the door enters into the space and you're expecting the room to be much bigger or maybe smaller you're not sure but it's not quite right and it feels a bit off but inside of the space what you realize is is that you are um, situated in what appears to be like a captain's chamber there are six treasure chests in the room on the side walls there is a massive table with a bunch of different food items kind of laid out on it and you would notice that the table has a ring of runes around the edge of it, uh, which Astrogoth you're able to decipher is basically kind of like a gentle repose spell. Basically all the food on the table will never go bad as long as it remains on the table, um, which is an interesting and quite useful thing to have, um, especially with the amount of food he seems to have on offer on the table. There's a desk nearby, and then there's a massive statue of a mermaid, which he kind of walks over to. Um, he gestures for um, whoever comes in last to close the door behind them. And once the door is closed, he then presents uh, one of his hands um, and one of the rings on his hands up to the mermaid statue. The statue then moves aside, which kind of seems to like slowly slither on its thin tail aside, and beneath it um, is a staircase down. He leads you into the bowels of the ship, um, which leads you through a mess hall, a massive mess hall, which is currently empty. But the thing you notice inside of this space, much like the space up above, is this space is filled with stash, or, uh, armor sets, just like the ones up above. He continues walking through to the other side of the ship, now at the front of the craft, um, and leads you down a set of steps. Um, and this would lead you into sorry let me get the metric right yep down <laughs> down he leads you through a section that has um, a bunch of rooms um, and halls very just winding paths of hallways um, until eventually you come to a kind of space with a large red carpet two guards outside and a massive vault door like bank vault door he nods his head. The two guards move over to the bank vault, spin the uh, massive, you know, um, handles on the device. The door opens up to reveal nicer suits of armor with nicer looking swords on the other side and a stair that leads down until finally I will pull you onto this map. Give me one second. Are you using one or two right now, Bravik? Which character sheet are you using? The new one or the old one? 
Let's steal the old one. Okay, cool. Baby cat. Do not do the bad thing. You cannot do the bad thing. For it is bad. Okay. Tell me what I can and cannot do in my own home. I do. Because <laughs> I am the baby cat owner. <laughs> the music shifted back to Johnny C. Bad. I need to shift you it. You cannot own me, mortal. I certainly can. And I do. I do see. He's now taken to sitting on that desk, staring out the window angrily. <laughs> I can't believe this boy. He's like, this is the first time you've run D&D in a long time. I'm like... He's so sassy. He says, I thought you quit that. Okay. So you see yourselves there. And, um, the, uh, guy kind of gestures towards the right or left. He says, either way we'll take you inside. Please be, um, mindful and do as he says. Go start going this way. The first thing that you see as you kind of enter into this hold is that the ground is covered with gold coins. There are treasures splattered throughout all of these gold coins magic rugs, jade stones, scrolls, relics, weaponry. Looks like someone made an effort try and make spaces for walking by using a broom to push the gold astride. Treasure chests, helmets, and all throughout everything, the far side of the room, you see a dragon. Curl up inside of the space. He looks small, but his face as it comes up to look at you looks ancient. Okay. Well, Landis is going to continue until the creature says to stop. You. You are the ones that Derek spoke of. Indeed. We are. You, you see him kind of like come around the corner and say, Hey! Don't use my real name! And then he kind of pops back around the thing. <laughs> I will do as I wish. Apple Eater. And then turns to look back to Orlandis. The Privateers. Indeed. That, that is us. <sighs> Orlandis is going to firmly stop like right here. As to not get too close. Well. As you can see, I am in no need of any Earthly gains every day I gain and gain as my red apples do my bidding. The chicanery that goes on upstairs, the light, always ends with me and my horde growing and growing. But I want something more something from you something only you so far as i have been able to find would be able to offer me oh god is he hitting on astrogoth too i want to have sex with the bugbear <laughs> <laughs> so you played a bard and everybody thinks you're a bard so everybody wants to fuck you and scene and that's all they, <laughs> and that's the end of the game 36 we seconds. did it is that how draco liches come around the aristocrats. The aristocrats. <laughs> God, that's good too. Um, the uh, dragon says, I have business with 
the ruling council of Penford. You will get me an audience with that council. And for that, I will protect you as you sail off to the east. Deal. Before I say anything in character, how growing up, Orlandis was taught about, you know, Aetan tradition and whatnot, right? Sorry. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, are dragons like looked at as like the well, antagonists? Red, red dragons are the worst of the worst. They're evil. But yeah, that's up to you how you want to like. In a ten tradition, that would very much ring true. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna say no. That's not the case. Yeah. Ob obviously, this guy is running a bandit group. Uh, mm -hmm. And he is obviously making fucking cash hand over fist. Like mm -hmm. he is not, he is not doing anything that could be considered like really evil that you know. Of. I mean, he's just passively gaining money. That's a smart dragon. He is the smartest dragon. <laughs> but it's up to you if you want to just go full bigot or not. Yeah. How does Lo say look? I mean, she looks badass. Yeah, I mean, she yeah. She looks but... fabulous. Come on. Okay. <laughs> she's okay. a little. Oh, she's no, a little all you. I, I I was the one who didn't uh, get rich. She back. looks awful. She yeah. looks the worst. <laughs> I think I think you convinced me into a hat. <laughs> um, oh, darling. <laughs> I know. Um. Yeah, she's she's chilling. If I, if I may ask, why do you want to meet with the Benford Council? My business is my own. Is it a prerequisite that this business be known to you, man of Parnak, before we treat, or are you it is... willing to allow me my privacy? It is not a necessity, but it weighs heavily on my conscience. If you wish to have that conscience cleared, you may ask, and I will tell, but it will come at a cost. Hmm. Just answer me this. Do you bring harm? Or do you mean harm? To whom? Parnak. No, oh, well, actually, Parnak, we don't care about. Like, no, Parnak, sorry. Penford. No. Then I will accept. Whenever you wish to leave, I will need a signal. Hmm. You there. Girl with the red hair. Yeah, what of it? In that chest there. This one? Hmm. There should be a striped staff or stick. Take it. When you are ready to leave from the deck of your ship, not directly beneath your sails, mind you, raise this to the sky and speak my name. It your name is? <laughs> for the purposes of that stick, gold belly will suffice. If you have mastery over the tongue of the serpent, Irgiron. Yeah, actually I do. <laughs> he means draconic, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's 
it seems like he pointedly specifically said the serpent, almost as if in reverence to the elf, you know. The name means the name, by the way. Yeah, I figured. All right, well, we'll give you a call out, uh, struggled belly. As he kind of, like, moves back to snuggling into kind of coiled position, you do notice that, like, he is lithe, but kind of strangely kind of shaped. Like, he definitely looks like he's just kind of... Like, it's almost an atrophied kind of for a dragon. I mean, to be fair, he hasn't had to really, like... Do, do anything for his coins, so... I think that means I can kill them. They feed him. <laughs> they give him all of... Yeah, all the benefits of... You know. But he's definitely got a good setup. Oh, yeah. A little jealous. So you're a doctor. You should tell him it's not healthy. Yeah. <laughs> At least go for a walk one Go for a fly every now and then. You'll, you'll also notice that this hold looks like it was built for the express purpose of this so like uh -huh. the ship is definitely not something he stumbled upon it okay. definitely looks like he's had the ship is his and it's just been repurposed for this benefit Orlandis will start backing out okay Do you want me to... <laughs> do, really do you need me to... Do, <laughs> do you need me to kill the dragon? No. <laughs> can't see it. No. Yeah, and all the side chats, they've been shushing me the whole time, because can't, <laughs> you can't not say that. Oh, I've killed one of your kind before. Uh, don't do it! No! <laughs> so is that, an, uh, is that a no? You don't need me? To, or not, not, not yet? No. If you stumble back up onto deck, um, Apple Eater will see you up. Um, on the way back out, I'd like everybody to go ahead and just make a perception check. Perception. <laughs> I'm seeing the back hey. of the <laughs> Everybody thinks there's like hundreds of these bandits on board the ship. Like, the ship is massive. I I will use my inspiration to have a good. Yeah, everybody's pretty sure there's like. My lucky stone for plus one. <laughs> hundreds of these bandits on ship, and some of them pass you by as you're moving through the hallways. Some of them have made their way into the um, the big hall I mentioned. Um, with that 24, what you'll notice is this ship is not only filled to the brim with bandits, it also seems to be fully functional as a ship. Mm -hmm. it, it has cannons. And based on the size of the ship, your guesstimate, Castia, is like galleon level cannons, like 24 per side. Like crazy amounts of armaments. This ship is goaded with the sauce, as the kids would say. I, I, I suppose. <laughs> is that correct, Jonah? Is that a thing? Is that is that what the kids would say? Would they say goaded with the sauce? I don't fucking know, probably. <laughs> You, you skipped his generation to the even younger generation, John. Now we're all lost. We need a younger kid. I thought Fo I thought Foxen was 12, but like he told me he's 30-something. Like, he's confused. older than I am. Yeah, it's, I thought he was younger. He's got like a boyish handsomeness. So not to flirt with another player or anything. <laughs> How dare you? You would never exactly. get off. Yes. <laughs> And then they're fighting over me. Oh. But anyways, <laughs> the ship is not only heavily crewed and the size of the Red Apple gang being massive, like in the triple digits, they also seem to, in this defensive posture, have very strong defenses. You make your way back up to the deck of the ship. Or rather, the deck of the casino. Can I finally go get that drink? Absolutely. Safe. <laughs> And if you're winding down, like, no problem. So I'm not going to say we're going to do another round of gambling because we're done with that. Um, if you want to chip out, 
get your coin. Um, if you aren't um, Orlando, if you aren't Jonah, I will give you one free go at the Jester Gambit, if you'd like. Sure. Okay, you can put down <laughs> my two coins on it. <laughs> okay, two two coins and um, five cups, and he wants you to pick two. I want the far left and the fourth cup, or <laughs> one and four. Okay, so the um, far left cup uh, yields ten coins. Nice. The fourth cup yields an egg. I'm gonna eat the egg. Yeah, it's wrong. <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong. He don't care. He's a fucking rat. He don't give a shit. He eats you know, the shell. Like he eats the shell. He just fucking puts it in in his mouth and consumes it. Rats um, actually really love raw eggs. So mm -hmm. that tracks. Anybody else want to throw another go on the uh, Chester? No, no, I'll, no. I'll throw it down. Okay, so again, one to ten coins. Um, we'll go with three. Okay, so a total of seven cups appear. You get three choices. One through seven. Um, let's go with one, four, and five. Okay, so with this, I need to do a thing. Um. I did not have the macro I had set up for seven. Um, you said one, four, and five? Mm -hmm. Okay. So one, uh, pop it open, four coins, um, four, egg, um, and five, a ring. Ooh. Yeah. We Dang. Pretty cool. It's a fancy schmancy looking ring. Um, it looks like it has a. It's a uh, ring of five wishes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making that mistake again. <laughs> it, um, ring of five, man. <laughs> it looks like it has a kind of um, pearl um, kind of set stone, um, gold um, and white gold kind of mixed throughout with a number of smaller kind of gemstones kind of placed about um, and around the kind of centerpiece. Um, it is um, very pretty. Um, and it definitely does have like an aura um, to it that's um, a bit more kind of uh, refined. Looking at the pearl more closely, you'll realize that um, it seems like the exterior of it has been where did he go? No way he got behind there. <laughs> oh demon. my god. The demon! <laughs> oh, the demon cat. <laughs> he didn't. He, he's eating food. He's eating food. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> oh, he's there. <laughs> so he, he can cat. have energy oh, no. to get back there. <laughs> yeah. What is this horror he's movie? He was just there. Now he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shim. Um, so it looks like the pearl on the sides of it, like almost as if it was kind of um, like etched onto it. Um, similar to uh, what are those? Curios, I think they're called. Um, yeah. Cameos, that's what I mean. Cameos. Yeah. yeah, like, but on the pearl sides, um, it looks like there's the face of some kind of Jarnaran dignitary who, if you have history trained, you would recognize as like an old dynast king. I do. Yeah. Cool. And uh, if you do get to the point where you're getting it identified, it is a ring of the orator. And I'll go ahead and get that uh, block of text put in your chat here while you continue on. Nobody else is doing anything, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna put my positive five chips in. I'm gonna pick all the cups. Okay, so five would be a total of 11 cups. <laughs> yeah. And you're just going to pick one, two, three, four, five? Is that what you said? I, I think so, yeah. I think that's going to be... You don't want to mix it up? No, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so um, let me check my notes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Egg, 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 ring, egg. egg. 
So four is also, an egg again. Maverick can absolutely have her egg. <laughs> four is an egg again. Um, so that that is the case. Um, five drops out four more coin. Um, the very first time we've actually seen this, uh, three and two both will have nothing, just empty. Oh shit! And that yeah, that's a possibility. It's just one that you haven't fallen upon yet. And then uh, one. Um, Huh. Um, yeah, roll a d100. Oh, shit. Magic idol. 100. Oh, sorry, I didn't roll a d100. That's not an actual 100. Oh, so. I was about to say. <laughs> roll 100. Rolling 100. 100. Oh. Four. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Unfortunate. I think... That, that's 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 not a patron thing, right? That I could just type roll 100 and get it on. <laughs> then you get to roll twice. You type it again. You probably roll 100. Uh, well, so I rolled 100. <laughs> that's, that's that, I guess. Um, okay. So um, when it pops open, um, it uh, a single coin that looks kind of like the chips, um, but its uh, facade is cameoed as well. Um, but it is a uh, like perfect rendition of Apple Eater on the coin. It just starts kind of spinning around until it stops uh, flat on the surface. That's fancy. Is that worth more than normal? When you pick it up, what would be, in your mental perspective, uh, upon picking it up, what would be the magic item that would be closest to your hand when you touch it? Uh, what do I have? Oh dear God! Sorry, I gotta load up to see what I actually have. Does Caster have a magic idol? Oh, we did you realize we got. Uh, it would probably be the Wand of Magic Missile, I guess, just because that's... Wand of Magic Missile? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it immediately, like, floats to that and latches itself to it. It probably latched to the bottom, so it's basically got, like, a weird pommel now. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what just happened, but, um, thank you, I, I guess. How many chips is oh. an egg worth? <laughs> None! It's all for the fun! <laughs> I'll throw three more coins at him. No, no, uh, everybody only got one go at the end. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to fall in love with this guy and just keep giving him all your money. You're, you and this game are very weird, but thank you, I guess. Uh -huh. I just want more eggs! <laughs> and you rolled a four, right? Yeah. Cool. I... I I'll sell you an egg for one chip. Uh, no. <laughs> so right. So Great. So right he just said it was worth nothing. Does the wand, sorry, does the wand require attunement? It doesn't, does it? No. What's the closest magic item that would, are you attuned to any magic items? Uh, a mantle of spell resistance? Yeah, it would latch onto that, not the other one. Oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> And, what uh, that mean? No. The simplest process of it, uh, the cameo actually grants the magic item an additional benefit. Um, the cameo is of human grace, um, and what that means is, is you can now understand any language spoken or written that would have been spoken or written by a human. So that includes Dennis Odvin, Vazriel, uh, Parnin, uh, all the um, other languages that are human. Thank goodness. I won't have to stare blankly when people are talking all the time now. <laughs> but yeah, a cameo of human grace. And basically it adds a trait to um, an already present attunement magic item. I was gonna say this is gonna look weird because now she's, she's got her little cloak on. And it's just a big old button. <laughs> I, I would imagine. Right I, I I would envision that it can probably be shifted around so it looks like it's a clasp. 
Yeah, yeah. It's probably I'm on turn it over. I don't it, want to If you look at the art for Cassia, you can see that there's like the little kind of like ring there. It, the cameo probably latched on there. Mm. Does that sound like it makes sense? In a graceful spot. Yeah. Does that make it make make sense? Actual person who knows how to do sewing and like fabric yeah. and <laughs> like cloaks. I don't <laughs> I've know. I've never anything. sewn. I've never sewn once in my life. Not even one time. We should go back to the to the to the boutique and have John inflict major trauma on Elizabeth by describing how clothes are fitted and adjusted and. Oh God, no. <laughs> There's just a hot glue that's, gun that's right to the head. Clowns, so let's not do that. Uh, and so you just um, so you just uh, take this stack of fabrics and you put them on top of each other and you. Uh, yep, that's. Do a scissors. I'll get the staple gun. <laughs> yep, that's what you do. Scissors. <laughs> and then, and then when you pull it apart, it's just like a bunch of people. They're like, <laughs> 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 that'd be a hell of a trick, though. Yeah. Um, okay. So your business at the uh, the beach whale, I presume, is concluded. Yeah, yeah. I had fun. I yeah. came out even. We're happy. And we secured a place to stay. The boat. <laughs> the boat. The boat. You had time. Um, also, exchanging before we leave my whale chips. Turn up. If you're all doing your exchanges, you can do it right at the front. The uh, guy who took your money in the first place is probably just giving you some of your money back or all of your money and someone else's money back. Yeah, I assume that I get all of somebody else's money. I'm so good at gambling. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh,. You're the best at it. Um, one, I mean, once you get back, you're able to take a long rest, I presume. Where did I leave Orlandus? Yeah, I think so. Okay. And um, so I didn't have a stinger. I do know that it is your goal to continue on to Penford. And of course, um, those who are watching, those who will watch this in the future, we're going to be on hiatus through the majority of November. Or the remainder of November, really. We might come back right after Thanksgiving. We'll see. Just depends on everybody's scheduling and stuff. Uh, but I do want to clarify just what the next story beat is before we kind of end it for tonight. So I just want to make sure that we all kind of leave with a sense of understanding as to what is going to be next. Do we wish to remain in sword break? Or do we want to get out onto the ocean? or other options, feel free to just discuss amongst yourselves what, like, the plan is, or what you might want to do. I do... Uh, I do still want to talk to that like and through. Um, on the day of down. Yeah, on the day of down, before we go. And Which then from... is in two days. Correct. True. Well, a One day. It'll be tomorrow. Now, yeah. Okay, so you're remaining until then. Yeah, because it, it, it was going to take like three days for the ship to get repaired, right? Correct. Which yeah. we've done one of. So today and then Sun, or sorry, Day of Dan, Sunday. The Day of Dan will be the last day, so you'll be leaving the next day after that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Perfect. He wants to do that. I want to go spelunking the Undercity. <laughs> spelunk the Undercity. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's the Undercity. You don't want to go talk to your new lizard buddy? Oh, well, yeah. Maybe he's under oh, there. Maybe he knows what's under the city. Ooh, good point, good point. Um, Lizard Buddy is... Checking my notes. We could all go spelunking on this day. Um, just so I'm ready for Oh, Astrogoth is going to go spelunking. <laughs> Into a very different under... <laughs> Dark. It's not called that here. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. So um, he is going to state that he is currently staying in 30. 30. I will bring that up on your map. Right next to the guardhouse. Hey. Hey. And if you got some information from him about it, he basically says, yeah, the guards put me up there. It's a house that's not really being used for much of anything. And I helped with the uh, problem um, up north. Uh, so, And if you 
want to visit with him. Um, that's like a quick matter I can handle uh, relatively quickly. Uh, basically, just to explain like what. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good like time for something. Yeah, like, perfect. Like, perfect timing. Yeah, that's perfect a timing. that's a great explanation. Yeah. You show up, knock on the door, and you just hear no. no. And he's like, <laughs> okay, and bye. And he he's printing. He's just busy printing. No. <laughs> But father, I must. I must print. He'll explain <laughs> to you that he was a mystic group of um, fellows who came in from Bridger and were given the assignment to help the town, more specifically help the uh, Red Apples, by killing a dragon, a blue dragon north of here that was causing them problems. Shoot. And Orlandis, it's not hard for you to piece together that uh, dragons are territorial, and it's no doubt the case that Goldbelly just wanted nobody rostering like history. Mm -hmm. Okay, listen, young man, I'm gonna karate chop your face. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop. It's gonna be it's gonna be five minutes most. That's what he wants. He wants you to karate chop him. Okay, so. Yeah. That that's an easy enough matter. If there was anything else that you wanted to discuss with the lizard folk, like where he got the coin, it was from that. Mm. Oh, stop. Okay. Okay. Well, we just took him out. We we, we got drinks. <laughs> Sounds good. And then, my new contact in the city. <laughs> I got one vote for spelunking the undercity. I got two votes for spelunking the undercity with Astrogoth. Anybody else spelunk? Be fine. Okay. I'm down. So that sounds like it's going to be a good point, um, and we'll obviously note the entry point being 22, uh, which I will probably put on a board here. 22! It seems like it's the most available option for you to kind of talk to some people who are doing construction work on the ground level, and also be able to access the underside if um, you inquire about it. Um, okay. Well, that's where we'll leave it off. We'll pick back up in a couple of weeks, or a few weeks here, and... Um, right back at Swordbreak. Thanks for watching yeah. those that did, and we will see you that time. Bye. Meh. Meh. Okay, bye. bye. bye.